Friday night football greetings from the Jim Landers deer stand <laughs> in Sheridan, Arkansas. And somewhere I can hear the late, great Freddie Reinhardt chuckling. This was his favorite press box, <laughs> affectionately called the deer stand. It is time for Benton Fighting Panther football. This evening, the Panthers have made the short drive down to Sheridan for the Battle of Highway 35 as the four and one Panthers take on the two and three Sheridan Yellow Jackets. In the Brad Harris era at Benton, the Panthers are a perfect six and zero against Sheridan with the average margin of victory, 48 to 14 in those six wins. Tonight, Benton looks to take the next step in their quest for back-to-back -back 6A East Conference championships. The Panthers are 2-0 in conference with wins over Jonesboro and last week's shutout of Sylvan Hills. Sheridan is 1-1 in conference with a thorough thrashing of West Memphis in their conference opener, followed by a 49-28 loss last Friday at Jonesboro. I'm Jim Gardner, joined tonight by Terry Benham, Henry Hicks, Rob Pepper, and Sheridan alum, Dio Venucci. Panther football on the Benton Football Network is produced by Eminem Productions and presented by Everett Buick GMC. Tonight's broadcast is sponsored by Vibrant Occasions Catering. Serge and his crew fed the team their pregame meal this afternoon. Panther football is also sponsored by Lost Pizza, CTS Industrial Services, Merchants and Farmers Bank, Jones Heating and Air, True Gentleman and True Boutique, Neo Home Loans, Hamilton Family Dentistry, Edward Jones Agent Caitlin King, Westside Wellness, Northside Church of Christ, Black Corley Owens and Hughes, The City of Benton, Truman Ball Real Estate, Solux Aesthetics, Elliott Electrical, Congo Fireplace and Patio, Allied Glass, ACDI, First Security Bank, Pasta Jays, and Central Arkansas Inflatables. And Dio, I bring you in for the first word tonight as we uh, are at the place where you made mem many memories as a uh, young Yellow Jacket. I, d I did, and, and but boy, Jim, the, it, it has changed a, a ton. I was telling Terry before the game, we were standing out there on the turf, and I remember playing in ankle deep grass that our coach grow, grew out to try to quote unquote slow down our opponents. I don't know if he realized it, but we got slowed down as well out there. So it's good to be back. My brother, we're actually playing against my brother who's uh, coaching uh, defensive backs for Sheridan. So uh, had a little bit of family uh, banter back and forth, but uh, I think I think everybody kind of know <laughs> has a feeling about tonight. There's no going in. No blue and gold on you tonight. No blue and gold over yeah. here. So, Terry, we ought to have some insider secrets on the broadcast tonight since Dio is uh, the big brother to one of the coaches across the way. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to hear uh, some of the sideline chatter, uh, see if there are any uh, war stories from that. Well, you there's, know, there's certainly YouTube chatter about there, it. There is YouTube chatter, <laughs> but here, here's the interesting thing. My brother's a defensive coach on a Kevin Kelly team, and – Kevin Kelly's teams are not known for their defense. Well, so, I was about to say, so, does your brother ever show up for work? <laughs> but yeah, he, he does. Um, he covers safeties. And, and when I remember playing for Sheridan against Pulaski Academy as a free safety, uh, I led the team in tackles, which is not a good thing. You don't want to do that. Yeah. You don't want to have your safety leading the team in tackles. So hopefully tonight will be a similar, similar outing for, uh, for, for Benton. This is the 38th time Benton and Sheridan have played. Benton leads the series 28 to nine. Last year, Benton won 48-14, which is exactly the average margin of victory uh, for Brad Harris in uh, the six wins against Sheridan. Sheridan's last win in the series was in 2012. And guys, I know you remember the last time we were here two years ago, it was oh, yeah. week 10. We kicked that thing off at 5 o'clock because of the threat of severe weather that night. One of the stranger settings uh, to play most of the game in the daylight the last week of the season. And then we think back to 2014. That's right, and, 2014. And the game that was halted and had to come back Saturday and finish. That, that was the game that took two days to finish. Yeah, yeah. Yes. the two-day game. Yes, and I think we came back and Chase Shamblin got hurt. Drew Davis went in at running back. 
Nethery dialed up an option and Drew went for uh, to the house and it was all over. As they get ready for the national anthem here at Yellow Jacket Stadium, we're going to step aside and pause for a break as you are watching Benton Panther football on the Benton Football Network. Is there anything more exciting on Friday nights than taking the field in front of your hometown fans? One of the most rewarding things about football is working with your team to move the ball across the goal line. My favorite part about football, though, is playing on a team. Uh, and when it comes to that, when it comes time to buy a refinance, you've got the team at Neo Home Loans to help you get across the goal line. Congo Fireplace and Patio has been Benton's go-to place for all your hearth needs since 1920. Stop by now and see over 20 live burning displays. With the South's largest collection of gas logs, gas inserts, and wood burning stoves, Congo has what you need to heat your home this winter. Get any accessory you need for your fireplace and stove in one place. Plus see the largest selection of pellet stoves. With over 90 years of combined sales and service, there's no other place to shop. Merchants and Farmers Bank is now open in the newly remodeled Cornerstone Downtown Building, formerly the Benton State Bank Building at 146 West South Street. Merchants and Farmers Bank is a community bank with local ownership and local decision making. Merchants and Farmers provides all the big bank products, but with a small bank friendliness. It's a banking experience you once enjoyed that is back in Benton at Merchants and Farmers Bank. Also conveniently located in Bryant at Highway 5 and Spring Hill Road. Stop by for a visit or give them a call at 501-443-6533. Jones Heating and Air, located at 520 Edison Avenue in Benton, specializes in residential, commercial and new construction HVAC systems and offers 24-hour service. Jones is a proud supporter of Benton Panther Athletics, the Saline County Boys and Girls Club, and youth sports at Benton's Riverside Park. Find out more at jonesheatingandair.com or call 501-778-3324. Allied Glass is a full-service glass shop located in historic downtown Benton. Allied Glass is a third-generation business and family-owned and operated since 1967. Mirrors, shower doors, commercial storefronts, auto glass repair and replacement, tabletops, screens, plexiglass, and much more. For all your glass needs, call Allied Glass at 501-778-6244, located at 115 East Severe in downtown Benton. Welcome back to Sheridan and the Everett Buick GMC Panther pregame show. Quick stat comparison between the Panthers and Jackets. The Benton defense, Dio, has been stout against the run this year, giving up just 81 yards a game. But Sheridan uh, is not a run-oriented team. They are going to throw it in the air, and we've seen the Panthers a little bit susceptible to the deep ball this year. So uh, strength on strength tonight. Well, it, it is strength on strength, but uh, the, one of the biggest differences I think that we're going to see is is from the line play. And I don't really think Sheridan, other than the Rodgers game, that they faced a line quite as talented or as deep um, as, as they're going to see tonight. And that's one thing that, that Rodgers kind of showed us is that if that quarterback gets pressured, he is not accurate. Um, and, and the way Kelly coaches his quarterback, if you're going to notice tonight, you're going to see him standing there what looks completely flat-footed, does not look like a, an athletic, you know, kind of stance. But that's how he's coached to be. And when you got Walter Hicks coming up the middle, that's no good. That's no bueno. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so – and uh, Terry, you, you coined a phrase this week in our uh, little email exchange talking about the game that I thought was very apropos. Well, the Benton Sack Exchange is open for business. Tonight. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I think that, um, as Dio pointed out, with Walter Hicks' quickness off of the snap, he's just going to be a problem all night for that quarterback. And listen, Benton's front defensive line, I mean, those are full-grown men down there, yeah. and, and they are they are hard to handle. And I, I just think there's going to be a lot of pressure on that, that uh, offensive front. With Carson Conyers down, Coolis is playing end as well tonight. So you've got Matias, Seals, and Alford, the front three, followed by Coolis, Laster, and Dominic Roy. That's six seniors yeah. up yeah. front. 
Uh, they're rolling kind of like a college front defensively. That, that's exactly right. And to segue into the offense, that's exactly what you're going to see on offense. We're banged up, man. We, yeah. we got a lot of guys hurt. And uh, I don't think you'll notice because what, what I think we'll see on offense is you'll just see a lot of new names. Uh, you got two true sophomores coming on the field to start at wide receiver, and both of them highly talented. Yeah, T.J. Williams and Bryson Griffiths tonight. T.J., uh, if you heard uh, Panther Live after the win over North Little Rock, T.J. was our Offensive Player of the Week that week, and I asked him because he's moved to running back as a sophomore, where do you like playing better, running back or wide receiver where you played as a freshman? And T.J. said wide receiver without pausing. Uh, he caught um, 29 passes for 430 yards and 10 touchdowns last year as a freshman. Well, and what most people don't know is T.J. leads the Panthers in uh, all-purpose yards per game. 124 yards per game when he's on the field. He's only been on the field twice, and one game, and and the second game that he was on the field, he lit the place up. And yeah. so, highly explosive and deep at wide receiver, these Panthers are. And then, probably the best quarterback in 6A, in Drew Davis. And I think Drew is going to have a lot of opportunities to push the ball vertically down the field. Yeah, Drew had a great game last week, 11 of 15, 151 yards, was pulled midway through the second quarter because it was already 49-0 Panthers. He threw for four touchdowns, ran for one. He's thrown for 21 touchdowns through the season's first five games. Let's hit a little this week in Benton Panther sports real quick. Seventh grade won 18 to 14 over North Little Rock on Monday. They're now five and one. JV took it on the chin at Conway on Monday night. They are five and one. And just a heads up, the JV game for Monday was canceled today. Hot Springs battling injuries and unable to field a team. So no JV game at home on Monday. Last night, the eighth grade and freshmen both lost to Lake Hamilton. Uh, the boys golf team played in the state tournament on Wednesday and finished second place. Congratulations to Elias Payne and Braxton Lane and Mason McDaniel on earning all state honors. And Coach Hoops Volleyballers continue to roll with 3-0 wins over Texarkana and Lakeside. They're now 11-0 in conference and have not lost a set. They a have set. shut out 3-0 every conference match this year. That's that's crazy. Dominant. That's dominant is what that is. That's a good That's a good word for it, Jim. Captains tonight are Tom Mattia, Walter Hicks, Elias Payne, and Dominic Roy for the Panthers. And uh, looks like uh, Sheridan has won the toss, and they will receive. That's exactly what we want. Pen, pen them back, force a four and out, and get a 20-yard field. Tonight in the 6A East, in addition to the art game here, El Dorado's at Sylvan Hills. The Wildcats will come to Benton next week. Jonesboro is at Catholic tonight, Terry, in the most intriguing matchup in the 6A East. Yeah, that should be a really good ball game and, and a really good test on uh, Little Rock Catholic. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching the results on that. West Memphis is at Marion, big rivalry game, but West Memphis really struggling uh, this year. Last week in Saline County, Bryant shut out Little Rock Christian. Arkadelphia beat Boxite 42-7. Malvern defeated Harmony Grove 52-12, and Glen Rose won a squeaker over Magnet Cove 49-42. Tonight in the county, PA's at Bryan. It's homecoming tonight for the Hornets. It's the Panthers come out on the field. Carrying that Freddie Reinhardt, number one fan flag. Boxside is at Nashville. Genoa Central's at Harmony Grove, and Jesseville's at Glen Rose. All right, real quick, our West Side Wellness picks to click. Rob Pepper, you're up first tonight. All right, I went with uh, Will Carter on offense and Isaac Hill on defense. I look for Isaac to have a big game out there with all the passing. Terry? Yeah, I've got Drew Davis. I think he's going to put on a show, and Walter Hicks is going to be unstoppable up the middle. Dio? Well, I, I went with uh, our running back, Luther Tucker. I feel like uh, we, we may see we may see a lot of action for Luther. And then give me one of our defensive linemen, Jay Offered, on defense. Good pick. Uh, I want to see uh, that this quarterback run down, and I think Offered's the guy to do it tonight. He should have a big night. 
So Garrett Honeycutt will kick off for the Panthers. Zay Stevens and Parker Mullins back deep for Sheridan. Real quick, guys, your uh, keys to victory tonight, Terry. Shock and awe. Jump on them early and keep the pressure on. And defensively, Dio. Well, you got to get pressure on the quarterback because that's the key. Everything runs through him, obviously. And when he gets pressured, he, he makes bad decisions. So let's get him, let's chase him down a little Help bit. Help him out. Yeah, let's help him with some of those decisions. 77 degrees. There is no wind tonight in Sheridan as we are underway. Honeycutt's kick into the end zone, and Sheridan will have it first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Starting tonight defensively for the Panthers. The front three are Owen Seals, Jay Alford, and Ty Mattia, all seniors. The linebackers are Weston Monson, the sophomore, Walter Hicks, and Nick Wright. Corners are Trey Stewart and Omarcus King. Safeties are Landon Jackson, Isaac Hill, and Cordell Payne. Dax McMillan, 6'3", 205-pound junior, is the Sheridan quarterback, completes 57% of his passes. He's thrown seven interceptions, first snap through his legs, and McMillan's going to fall on it all the way inside the 10, back at the 9. Well, Dio, that's the kind of start that you want on defense because now they can pin their ears back and come after him. Well, and you notice you notice who was up near the center. I don't know if that had anything to do with it. It doesn't look like it did, but Walter Hicks was stemming right there, and he's going to cause trouble for this offensive line all night long. Second down, handoff to Stevens. Flip back to McMillan, tried to get it to Stevens, and there were five Panthers around there. Stevens is a marked man tonight by the PDC. Yeah, at that time, Landon Jackson was a few steps short, but, boy, that was a dangerous little float right over the middle, Dio. Well, that, I mean, it was a, it was a neat play called a little flea, uh, flea flicker there, but the running back couldn't get open. Got Kind of got thrown off his, his, uh, his route. Hicks showing blitz on third down and 21. He gets to him as Walter takes down McMillan at the two-yard line. And that is going to bring up fourth down and 28. And we will see if Sher Sheridan notoriously goes for it. Will they go for it this deep in their own end? Going for it on your one-yard line is they don't a, have they don't have a choice, guys. They don't practice punting. Uh, well, listen, <laughs> listen. A non-practice punt would be a really good idea right now. I well, mean, they do the quick kick. Punts it. Yeah, they do the quick kick, but they don't have a true punter. And it is going to be down to the 31. So mission accomplished, boys. Yeah, absolutely. Benton got the ball at the 31, Terry. Yeah, the mission accomplished. That's exactly the start that the Panthers needed on defense. Now let's see if this offense can come up and dial something quick. I'm, I'm calling a first play touchdown. It's a tradition here at Sheridan. Well, they've like. certainly got the defensive coverage for it. Payne, Coolis, and Carter split to this side, flip out to Elias, and Elias is going to be hammered down by Jacob Pilkington. He is their leading Sheridan tackler with 31, 5'760 pound senior linebacker. It is a gain of two. It'll be second and eight. Well, that, I mean, that was about as good a start for Sheridan's defense as they could have hoped for. Yeah. Will Carter in motion, going to reverse, go back the other way. Fake to Tucker. Drew Davis with running room. And Drew is smooth into the end zone. 30-yard touchdown, Drew Davis. How about that speed, Dio? We saw it uh, last week, and, and this time he went right up the middle and split the safeties. Well, Terry, all honestly, the way he didn't even have to be. He didn't even have to have any speed. There wasn't anybody around him. I mean, he just <laughs> turned the corner and it was uh, wide open. That Sheridan's playing that defense up really tight to the line of scrimmage all the way across uh, the field, and I, I don't understand that with a team like Benton that can stretch it. Honeycutt's extra point is good, and the first minute and 45 seconds has played out according to script. The PDC does its job. Benton with a short field immediately capitalizes Terry as, as Drew showed an extra gear on that run. Yeah, that offensive uh, series only lasted two plays, and Dio, both of those plays, T.J. Williams was lined up on the outside in press coverage. 
that's a really bad idea. Yeah, they're they're not going to be able. They won't do that for very much longer. I mean, it. They've got that one, you know, one free safety back there, and they're playing press man on almost every receiver. I just don't under. I, I don't get that. So didn't score on the first play, Dio. No, but will we you did take play the it. second one? I'll take the second. Okay. <laughs> I'll take the second. So seven nothing Panthers, ten fifteen to go in the first quarter. Brought to you tonight by True Gentlemen. As Braylon Russell has made his way into the stadium, he's going to be our halftime guest. As that kick is going to bound into the end zone, and Sheridan once again will have it first down and ten at their own twenty. Benton winning the field position battle, and Sheridan will help you in that regard. Uh, as long as you can uh, force them to fourth down. I do want to confirm, I talked to Matt Tebow today, funnel cakes abound tomorrow at Old Fashioned Day. Oh, there we go. So uh, I know that was a make or break thing for you, Dio. They will be there. Well, funnel cakes are important, Jim. It's one of the four major food groups. <laughs> First down, a little reverse pass as they throw it back. Oh, Marcus picks it off. As uh, Sheridan trying to get really, really cute, though Marcus wasn't fooled. Picks it off, and Benton's going to start again in Sheridan territory at the 31. Dio, there's your guy. Oh, Marcus just played that one like a center fielder. Never fooled for a minute. No, he stayed with his guy the whole time. High pointed the ball. I mean, he he was. I mean, the, the receiver didn't even go for the ball really. That kind of. Well, it was it was significantly underthrown. It was significantly underthrown. Let's get the offensive starters front. Uh, Mason Hurd at left tackle, Isaiah Gibson at left guard, Garrett Pilkington's the center, Parker Glaze at right guard, Jackson Kendricks is the right tackle on first down. Drew Davis licks and fires it over the head of Elias Payne. Drew Davis is your quarterback. Luther Tucker is the running back. Receivers are Elias Payne, Will Carter, TJ Williams, and Bronson Coolis. It's second down and 10, Benton at the Sheridan 31. I think Davis is still a little fired up from his run. He got a little, <laughs> little too much energy on that throw. Benton goes with trips to the open field. T.J. Williams, the lone receiver to the short side. Snap back to Drew. He's going to throw to T.J., and T.J. couldn't make the over-the-shoulder catch as he had Wallingsford beat, and it'll be third down. Well, Sheridan bringing five on pressure. They like to show – they showed six – and so they're just trying to create a little havoc. They kind of remind me of, you know, that Sheridan is running a defense, kind of a similar style to when Brad Harris first came into Benton and started running that blitzing from, you know, they were coming out of the bleachers. Um, see what kind of pressure they bring on third and long. Here. Well, they got Carson Collett out there too. Carson just ran on the field. It's good to see him back. Yeah, not 100%, but I'll take Carson on the field all day long as Luther Tucker is going to carry down to the 25-yard line, and that is going to leave Benton with a fourth and four at the Sheridan 25. Yeah, that was a really smart play call. Shorten that up and make get this to be a makeable fourth down. So on fourth down and four, offense stays in. Play being signaled in by Randy Shaw, the running backs coach. Tucker in the sidecar now motions out of the backfield. It's an empty gun for Drew. He throws, and Will Carter cannot come up with it. Will was looking for a flag. Reed Stevens, the free safety in coverage, and the ball's going to go over to the Jackets. Well, I think Drew got a little had a little pressure in his face right there. May have had may have had to get rid of it just a half second before he really wanted to there. And uh, yeah, he did. He did. He he threw it just a little early. Um, looked like Will Carter breaking across the middle there, and another step, and he would have been in place. So first down, Sheridan at their own 25. Benton leads at seven nothing with 9:20 to go in the first quarter. An empty gun for McMillan. Right showing blitz. McMillan's going to throw. Catch by Jace Bradshaw. He was hammered by Cordell Payne. Walter Hicks finished off the tackle at the 34. Yeah, Cordell really came up and laid a lick. Those are the kinds of hits, Dio, that take a toll long-term across the game. Yeah. 
Second down and one for Sheridan. Again, an empty gun hick showing blitz this time. Panthers are coming. Lob, catch, Peyton Starrett, and that's going to go for a touchdown as Starrett got behind the secondary, and all of a sudden momentum has swung to the gold and blue. Well, you know, 66 yard touchdown pass. Yeah, that, that's the thing about this kind of offense and defense. When you make mistakes, and that's what his whole game philosophy is, is to get you in a position to where you make mistakes. And, and when you make mistakes, then big plays happen, and that's what they're living and dying on, Dio. Well, and they, I mean, we, I think we all knew that Sheridan was going to score some points tonight just because of the style of offense that they play. So this is one of those things that I would assume Coach Harris has been, you know, prepping his defense. I mean, they, they're not going to get down on that. Stevens in motion. Is Sheridan going to go for two? They're going to swing it out to Stevens. And unloading on him on the edge was JTP. Man, he didn't look a bit. No. Injured on that play. <laughs> wow, no. what a lick. No, the, I was going to say on that uh, that first completion that they had, you know, Jay Thomas was in coverage, and that that little slant route is probably going to be, be the hardest thing for Jay Thomas to be able to cover with his toe being hurt because that's, you know, requires such a lateral move. Well, that didn't require any lateral moves right there. That was straight ahead, and his toe was not bothering him with that motion, clearly. To, to quote the great Darren McFadden, he brought that wood. Yeah, he did. Yeah. So Sheridan will onside kick it after every score. It's something that Coach Hammonds, the special teams coach, has worked with the guys all week, a lot of extra work and practice preparing for the onside kicks. Preston Hur is the Sheridan place kicker. Ball does not take the, the big hop they were looking for. Will Carter gets on it, and Benton's going to have it as uh, there is an excessive scrum down there. Sheridan came out with the football, but they've I, already called. They've already signaled Benton. That, they already signaled a Benton, Benton ball. Yeah, that ball was yep. that ball was down and dead 30 seconds ago. So it's Panther football at their own 46-yard line following the onside kick recovery by Will Carter. Uh, get another look at it, guys. Well, as you see, it, uh, Will initially bobbles it, then falls on the ball, and it's clearly dead. Yeah, I mean, that's possessed right there. They just wrestled it away from him in that big scrum. So time for the Panthers to answer, leading 7-6 to six with 8.39 to go in the first quarter. Pooch. Chain gang is having a little uh, little confusion. Pooch stays in the game at X receiver. Coolis going to motion back toward the line. Going to hand it off to Luther. And boy, look at the line surge. Pre uh, Parker Glaze down there leading the charge. Yeah, Parker Glaze is such a great offensive lineman and ran right behind him that time, Dio. And look. Hey, they can, that's nine yards on first down, and they can do that all night if they want. Second down. Going to fake to Tucker. There's Drew again. They are not accounting for Drew Davis in the run game, and Drew is going to score. 46 yards for Davis to the end zone. He broke a shoestring tackle, regained his balance, and Drew's trying to run himself into the Heisman. <laughs> well, and I'm going to tell you, we, you Called that a fake, but that was no fake. That was a read, and that was a great read because Drew Davis saw the end crash down, and, I mean, that's exactly the way that play is supposed to be done. That's exactly right. Fantastic read by Drew. Two-play, 54-yard touchdown drive. Honeycutt's extra point is good. And as we go down to Rob Pepper for the first time tonight, Rob, uh, Drew Davis in the run game, I did not have that on my bingo card tonight. Can we just run the zone read until we hit 42 points? <laughs> I like that. I like that offense. That's good. I'm impressed with Drew Davis keeping his balance on that. I mean, he had the he got the the foot slap, but did not go down. That's some good. That's good balance. 
Drew Davis, 75 rush yards in less than four minutes. Yeah, he's two touchdowns. Well, I was about to say, he's averaging 35 yards a carry at this point. Yes. Love it. His Panthers up 14 to six, a two play, 54 yard. Caitlin King, Edward Jones by the numbers, scoring drive. Took all of uh, 36 seconds. So uh, the Sheridan drive took 38 seconds. The Benton scoring drive took 36. And it's time for the PDC to clamp down on defense. It's Honeycutt's kickoff is going to be his third touchback of the first quarter. And Sheridan will put it in play first and 10 at their own 20. Boy, he's a weapon, isn't he? Yes, sir. Three straight in the end zone. We've got somebody down. We've got a one of the one of the chain, chain gang. gang. T.J. White over there checking on him as we've got a uh, member of the chain crew down on the Benton sideline. Now he's up and good to go. I don't even know what happened. So it's good to see him up and uh, ready to go. So let's see what the Benton defense can do here. Sheridan's third possession, or excuse me, fourth possession already. It's been forced to punt. Oh, Marcus King had a pick. Then Sheridan had the big 66 yard scoring pass. So McMillan quarterback gonna take the snap. He hands off to Eli Turner, the big running back. Turner runs into Walter Hicks at the 25 after a five yard gain. Yeah, it was a good run. Uh, got into that second level. He didn't get much further than that second level, but uh, offensive line did a good job of opening him whole. Turner listed at six foot 235, a junior. Has 18 carries for 67 yards coming into the game tonight as Zay Stevens, their feature back, is set up in the slot to the far side of the field on second down and five. That's Stevens in motion. They're gonna give to him on the jet sweep and the Panthers not fooled by that as Stevens was hit in the backfield, spun his way for a yard, it'll be third and four. Yeah, it was an interesting uh, route that he chose, Dio. I mean, his, his strength is speed, and he had all of his speed going, and then he had to stop and cut back well, against the I think that's defense. a designed counter play. I think that's a I, – I, I know it didn't look like it because it looked like he was going to keep, you know, speed sweet, but they pulled the guard the other way. Third down, McMillan stands tall in the pocket, throws. Catch is made over the middle of the field. Landon Jackson immediately there to make the tackle as Wally DePriest made the catch for a Sheridan first down. Yeah, the Panthers have backed up a little bit. Now, now they're going to start dink and dunk, Dio, and throwing underneath on those defensive backs. Yep. Got to get that pressure on him. Good chess match between uh, Kevin Kelly and Brad Harris when the Yellow Jackets have the, the footballs. Hicks showing pressure. There he comes. McMillan gonna lob one up for Zay Stevens and Good it's defense. batted away by Landon Jackson. Great pass breakup. Hey, that ball was on target. And Landon Jackson just saved a touchdown. Yeah, well, he did a good job of not, you know, not trying to play the man. He tried to play the ball and he got just enough on it to I mean, otherwise, they would have caught that. Yeah. That was a catch coming. And he was behind the defense. That, that was a touchdown. That was good defense. Second down and 10 jackets at their own 33. It's Panthers trying to align, and now we've got a false start that'll back Sheridan up five yards. Well, in Kevin Kelly's own words, he's going to be freaking upset about that. <laughs> You've watched some overtime. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Rob Rob was goading me to use the the term freaking uh, as many times as possible tonight, but I just I, I feel like I might get tossed off the air <laughs> if I used it as many times as he does. Oh my, where's it out? Second down and fifteen. 
Panthers again showing pressure. Handoff to Zay Stevens. There's that Stevens speed. Stevens on the edge. Boy, let it and go. Zay Stevens streaking up the Sheridan sideline, and he is gone. Touchdown, Sheridan. Zay Stevens takes it 72 yards, bent and burned by big plays in this first quarter. And Sheridan cuts it to 14 to 12. Uh, you, you see that speed that Stevens has, and that's why he's got five D1 offers as a sophomore. Uh, I mean, he is a shifty running back, and I mean, I, from what I understand, he's playing with, uh, you know, a little bit of a. Would you say his hammy was barking? I mean, yeah, so yeah, it didn't look like it. Didn't look, didn't look like, like it on at that all. play. Sheridan going to go for two. They bring their receivers tight to the line. Motion Stevens out, going to throw for the corner, and that one batted away by Isaac Hill. Another good pass breakup in the secondary. And so it's 14-12 Panthers with 6.04 to go in the first quarter. Rob, Sheridan has uh, burned us with the big play twice. It's, it's kind of a Coach Kelly design ball right there. I mean, he's going to take his shots, and if he can find a weakness, he's going to try to exploit it. We just we have to be more sound. I mean, we didn't take a great angle, and that running back has great speed. I mean, Zay's a, he's a heck of a football player. Well, and Rob, you're right about that angle. We were just looking on the replay, and, and our players have, have gotten it, – it's just really aggressive. We're I think we're, you know, playing to the inside, and, and whoever had outside contain just jumped in and, and let him get outside of him. That's plain and simple. So Preston Herr is going to tee it up. Panthers aligned for the onside kick. 11 men within 10 yards of the 50. The so ball takes that high hop. Will Carter goes up high, came down. I believe the ball popped free, and they are going to say Benton football as that ball found its way out of bounds. Will. Boy, he is in the danger zone in that onside recovery. Boy, he really, he really is. is. Yep. That's why they've got the good hands over there, Dio. That, that, there's nobody on this team that catches the ball in traffic better than Will Carter, and he's the perfect guy to have over there. But boy, having to go up high when those guys are bearing down on you, no fun. No. And that one did take a good high bounce. It did. First down. Drew Davis drops back. He's being pressured. Drew looking to unload it. Now he's just going to throw it out of bounds. Live to fight another day. Yeah, smart smart play by Drew Davis. There was nowhere to go. Will Carter came open late, but by that time he had run out of sideline. Well, and was I didn't see, was Will on – the opposite side of the field, or was he no, same across side. the middle? Yeah. Okay. Swing pass out to Luther Tucker. Luther with a little stop and go and losing his helmet, making the tackle for Sheridan is Braxton Fox. He's their strong safety. Terry, as you noted, played tight end for him last year on offense. Yep, that's right. Well, you know, Coach Kelly's moving players around. He's trying to get the personnel that he needs. and. Third down and two, going to flip it out to Poot. Poot with running room. He's got the first down. As uh, Pilkington going to make the tackle inside the 35 down to the 31. That's a 17-yard gain and a first down. Carson had blended into the sideline, and when Drew threw that ball, I thought he was throwing it out of bounds. Yep. And that all of a sudden, you see Poot take up the sidelines. Panthers going fast as Drew. Looking to the corner, has Elias who makes a NFL style catch on the sideline and now Elias comes up Gimpy. Yeah, boy, that was a really good catch that he did too. Shielding the ball with his body, but he, he he's not playing 100% and it looks like he hurt that, uh, hurt that ankle again. Boy, you hate that. Uh. A, a non-contact injury is those are never fun to deal with. It's Panthers running thin at receiver Bryson Griffiths, a super sophomore, checks in to replace Elias. On first down, give it off to Luther Tucker. Breaks a tackle. There goes Luther. Touchdown. What a powerful run by Tucker of 17 yards. And Benton's in the end zone again up 20-12. Man, I will tell you something. You're not going to arm tackle Luther Tucker. 
I mean, he's 5'8", 180. He, he's, not, he's not like Braylon was, but you're not going to arm tackle that guy. He runs way too hard. Well, he's got such good sense of balance. I mean, we've seen him run backwards every time, and he never loses a step. Garrett again, true on the PAT, and Benton now up 21-12 to 12 with 5.27 to go in the first quarter. Rob, the defenses have not gotten off the bus yet. <laughs> we did early, guys. We just need to settle in. Uh, I think now we can kind of respect uh, Zay's speed, and uh, I, think, I think we'll be able to contain them a little better. So the Panther drive 34 seconds. Panthers have scored three times and no drive, Terry, has taken taking as much as a minute. Yeah, right now it's a track meet and um, we need the PDC to step up and get a stop so that we can go ahead and, uh, and make a spread. Bobby McAllister is gonna have a carpal tunnel tonight trying to keep up with the numbers on this one. As uh, Sheridan lined up uh, almost as if the Panthers are going to onside it, or maybe they're just conceding that Garrett's going to kick it in the end zone again. So he drives that one over the head of Parker Mullins, about five yards deep, and Sheridan will have it first and 10 on the 20. So Benton winning the field position battle, guys. It's time for the PDC to lock down right here. Yeah, Garrett's certainly doing his job, and, and Jim, they've lined up that way on every kickoff. Uh, so I think you're right. They've just seen enough film on Garrett to know that he's going to hit the end zone on a night like tonight. And you never know when Coach Harris is going to go for that onside because he'll do it at random. Yeah. So the Yellow Jackets break the huddle, sprint to the line of scrimmage. Twins to each side. Say Stevens in the sidecar to the right of Dax McMullen. As McMullen drops the football, there's a scramble for it. The Panther was on it. It squirted free and able to come up with the fumble for the Yellow Jackets as number 63, Jacob Jordan. That'll, uh, that'll technically go down for a loss of one, but uh, deal, that was almost like a first down, uh, keeping that ball. The Panthers should have had that fumble. Boy, and it really did roll around on the ground for a minute. Second down and 11 for Sheridan as they bring a band in motion. That stare at, they're going to try to swing Ooh. it out to him. And Landon Jackson read that one. Now an extremely late flag. Coming. Oh, my goodness. This is, uh, this, is, this is what's wrong with football at every level right here. That, that's a football play that should never be thrown as a penalty. He didn't hit him in the hand, hit head, he hit him in the chest. That, that is an absolutely terrible call. Personal foul targeting, my word. You know, that almost looked like the guy thought, oh, I've seen this on TV, I can throw this. Watch the replay. Hit him in that, the shoulder. Well, that, that, he did have a little bit of helmet to helmet, but he was also going for the ball. It was face mask to face mask. And uh, Brad bending the ear of the official. This is one of those where I wouldn't be upset if Brad got another 15 on top of it. That's just, that's just a terrible call. The Panthers are going to take a timeout. Brad Harris would have been the ear of the referee. And while he does that, let me bend your ear about vibrant occasions. Vibrant Occasions is full of happy people that make other people happy. They offer full service catering and will handle everything from setup to cleanup, ensuring a seamless and stress-free experience. Their customized menus offer a wide range of options to suit your taste and dietary preferences. Vibrant Occasions exist to create moments that will be cherished forever. Give Serge and his team a call for your next catering at 501-408-2111. So Brad Harris got his uh, protest in. Panthers back out on the field ready to go. Wow. 
Well, hopefully it'll wake and, and fire this defense up. It, it's, it's time to go exact a little bit. PDC's been spot on in the short pass game tonight. That is for sure. Yeah. So first and 10 following the penalty jackets at the 34 as McMillan stands and throws. Starrett makes the catch. Landon Jackson having a nice first quarter for the Benton defense, makes the tackle at the 40. Yeah, he sure is. He's kind of all over the field tonight, Dio. Well, and they've, the, the position that they've got him in, he's, he's keying on uh, – Keying on the strong side, so he's getting lots of opportunities. But that last play, we saw Jay Thomas lined up at kind of an inside, like one of the inside linebacker spots. Now Jay slides back out more to that spur position. Four man front, so they'll run it with Zay Stevens. That time, the Benton defense did a really nice job as Dominic Roy didn't give up on the play. Owen Seals. And Landon Jackson putting himself in there too with a little assist. No gain on the play. It'll be third down and four for Sheridan. 3.08 and counting in the first quarter. Benton leads at 21 to 12. McMillan awaits a snap. Benton showing blitz. Snap back. McMillan stands, throws. Intended for Stevens, who pushed O'Marcus in the back. Incomplete, and it'll be fourth and four, and Sheridan will go for it. You know, we, we, we were talking about that bad call previously. Uh, the, the game that Benton had 15 penalties in, and we were so frustrated. Brad sent, Coach Harris sent eight of those to the head office, the head officiating. You know how many were said that were bad calls? Eight. All eight. All eight. Fourth down and four, Panthers pointing as if they know what play is coming right here. It's McMillan takes the snap, gets it out to Bradshaw, and it depends on the spot. Owen Seals is saying Benton football. The linesman on the near side is saying short. He is short. The Panthers have held and will have the football in Sheridan territory. Great job by the Panther defense. Well, and, and Jay Thomas almost got a hand on it. Yep. Couldn't. You know, got the pass completed, but then O'Marcus and Jay Thomas combined to get him out of bounds quick enough to get the turnover. Yeah, he was almost a full yard short. So it'll be first down Panthers at the Sheridan 43-yard line with 245 to go in the first quarter. I mean, look at look at Collett down here in the corner, just right for a slant. A handoff to Luther. And Luther doing his usual tough running down to the 34. Man, nine yards of carry. <laughs> well, it's tough not to give it to your running back when he's doing like that, but when they've got, when Collett's got that much green space and the safety's nowhere near, and he, I mean, the safety was slid all the way over. Oh, yeah, stutter to the inside, and he's wide open. To go back to Luther. Luther breaking tackle, spinning to the end zone. Touchdown, Luther Tucker. And the explosive Benton offense in this first quarter has been on the turf with on the legs of Drew Davis and Luther Tucker. Absolutely on the turf. Dio, we, we, may, we may be talking about this offensive line by the end of the game. Man, they are opening some holes and taking care of business up front. Well, and you saw the two Sheridan defenders get their hands on Luther early because of the, you know, the pulling guard and tackle freed up some space for him. But then, it, you know, you just can't get a hand on Luther and expect him to go down. Then he does that little nifty spin move. Look at this. So he gets two defenders on him quick, but boom, big spin move. And then he's just, he's wide open. All gas, no brakes to the end zone. How about another two play touchdown drive? 43 yards in 34 seconds. And the Panthers go up 28 to 12. I was thinking 56 points, but D.O. Panthers are on pace for that in the first half. I, well, I mean, they've been on pace, I feel like almost every game this year. I mean, against uh, Sylvan Hills, we were on pace for 160 points <laughs> after the first quarter. Well, right now the Panthers have 152 yards rushing. And we're still in the first quarter. Yeah. 
that's what feels so weird to me is that we're still in the first quarter. 2-11, in fact, to go in the first quarter. As uh, Garrett, again, going to boom it into the end zone, and I wonder at what point that leg begins to get weary. <laughs> I was about to say, Garrett's going to be careful. He's going to pull a hammy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Panthers up 28-12. Uh, Rob, a happy sideline down there? Very energetic sideline. I love our freaking run game. It looks <laughs> phenomenal. But I'm telling you, the more they try to key in on that, we had Colette out here one-on-one, -on -one, yep. and like Dio was saying, it takes him getting just leverage inside or out, and he can take the top off of it. So first down, Yellow Jackets. It's a handoff. Stevens breaks a tackle. Cannot get away from Isaac Hill at the 27-yard line, a gain of seven, and quite frankly, Sheridan running the ball a little more than I expected. I, I, absolutely, they are well, but when you got a weapon like Zay Stevens, absolutely. I mean, you may you get the ball in his hands however you can. Came in as their leading rusher, their second leading receiver with 28 catches. Combined 882 yards and 12 touchdowns coming into the ball game. Millen, quick, fires to Starrett, who makes the catch. Landon Jackson, again on the tackle, and Starrett a little slow to get up. He is their leading receiver, came in with 42 catches. Had the big 66-yard touchdown catch to yes. open the scoring for Sheridan tonight. Starrett's got some wheels. We saw him leave the defense earlier, so. First and 10 jackets at their own 32-yard line. Millen. Ball Throw underneath hit. coming up to uh, make the immediate hit on the receiver was Trey Stewart, that catch by Wiley DePriest. Yeah, that ball was tipped. Yeah. Too. Give him six yards, second and four. His clock at a minute five to go in the first quarter. And off to Stevens, running to the short side. And the Panthers did a better job on the edge that time as Trey Stewart and Isaac Hill make the tackle. Boy, he's really explosive, man. He, he's a little bit scary when he gets on the edge. No doubt. Panthers doing a lot better job that time than the first time they ran that to the short side. He took it 72 yards to the end zone. First down and 10, Jackets. McMillan just going to keep on the quarterback run. And Isaac Hill is going to make the tackle at the 46. Before this series, Isaac Hill hadn't recorded a tackle yet, recorded three on this drive. Yeah. Yeah, quarterback's just reading that, uh, that linebacker set and saw open field, just took off running. Second down and six, hand off to Stevens. He's dropped in the backfield by Walter Hicks. A TFL for the leading tackler for the PDC on the final play of the first quarter. And we have finally finished quarter number one with Benton leading 28 to 12 tonight on the Benton Football Network. Allied Glass is a full service glass shop located in historic downtown Benton. Allied Glass is a third generation business and family owned and operated since 1967. Mirrors, shower doors, commercial storefronts, auto glass repair and replacement, tabletops, screens, plexiglass, and much more. For all your glass needs, call Allied Glass at 501-778-6244. Located at 115 East Severe in downtown Benton. Is there anything more exciting on Friday nights than taking the field in front of your hometown fans? One of the most rewarding things about football is working with your team to move the ball across the goal line. My favorite part about football, though, is playing on a team. Uh, and when it comes to that, when it comes time to buy or refinance, you've got the team at Neo Home Loans to help you get across the goal line. CTS Services is an industrial service company providing vacuum truck services, high pressure water blasting and large roll off dumpsters. CTS in partnership with Recycle Saline hosts a hazardous household waste drop off once per quarter. 
CTS is always looking to add great members to our team. Down the nine to open the second quarter, McMillan rolls to his left, throws underneath, and he threw it right to Landon Jackson. And Jackson with his second pick in two games, returns it into Sheridan territory down at the 40 yard line. And how about Landon Jackson coming up big Dio? Absolutely, and I mean, he, he was flowing over as the quarterback rolled, and that is exactly what you're supposed to do quarterback looked like he was throwing it to Landon Jackson. We're going to have Ty Mattia getting a, I think a block in the back maybe on the return. Yeah, it's exactly what they call block in the back at the 40, but man, that look, that look drawn up, Terry, for Landon Jackson. Yeah, Landon Jackson's playing a heck of a first quarter, man. He's got a lot of tackles. He's been in on several others and uh, really playing well. Panthers have it at midfield following the Landon Jackson interception. First down and 10. Drew Davis drops back, steps up, lobs it downfield. Catch in stride. And Carson Collett has it down at the three-yard line. Boy, you saw it. Dio, we've been talking about it the entire first quarter. You saw it right there. He had the great coverage. Felt like Drew would take the top off of it. That's exactly what he did. Panthers hurry to the line, hand it off to Luther Tucker, who again breaks the first tackle. It looked like Brady Dillon and company were able to stop him at the one, a gain of two, second and goal. Panthers were perfect in the red zone last week at Sylvan Hills after struggling in the red zone the first four games. Chance to punch it in here, and Luther Tucker is going to get that opportunity behind Parker Glaze, and he's in for the touchdown. Touchdown Luther Tucker, and Benton goes up 34-12. to 12. Luther Tucker having a big night tonight. That's three touchdowns, two of them on big runs, but I like that play right there because, when you, you know, we I've, I've griped about that. Uh, we get, you know, within the five-yard line, we throw the ball a bunch. I like just running it down their throats. Honeycutt's Easy. extra point is good. It was a perfect snap from Kaysen Wright. Hold from Will Carter, and the Panthers up 35-12 to with 11.06 to go in the first half. And, uh, and Rob, I, I like the way the last uh, couple of possessions have gone. The offense just unstoppable tonight. Yep. I I called that play, Chuck. <laughs> that was nice. That was nice. Just give, just give Poot a little, little space, and he can take it. But what the effort to lay out on that catch, guys, is for for a guy that's a bit hobbled. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and and, and Carson's not even playing a hundred percent, and uh, really laid out well for that ball. Was able to make a big catch. So the Panthers up 35 to 12. Landon Jackson had an interception to open the second quarter and the Panthers able to punch it in on a three play 50 yard drive. Carson Collett had a 46 yard catch. Luther Tucker, the final yards on that drive to punch it in and uh, Honeycutt's leg showing no sign of wear as again he Kicks it into the end zone. All touchbacks tonight from the Panther senior kicker. Who incidentally scored a perfect 36 on his ACT? Wow. That's impressive. That would be like me taking it twice. Well, I was going to say, if you added all three of ours up, <laughs> we probably wouldn't have 36. Hey, First. Now. hey now, hold on. Oh, oh, oh. Dio wants to weigh in with his ACT score. Flip out to Zay Stevens. And Stevens is going to carry for a first down. Landon Jackson on the tackle. And a hold is going to bring that one back and wipe out the first down run. Who was that on the tackle, Jim? Landon, Landon Jackson. Landon Jackson again. Yeah. yeah, we've got one on the turf right now, too. Yeah, that's, that's Cordell. Looked like he may have gotten rolled up. Hey, it's good to see TJ jogging. All right, back to the walk. Don't be in too much of a hurry. 
So the penalty is going to move it back to the 10. As uh, Cordell immediately up. And what is it with the pain boys and the ankles tonight? Big brother Elias went out. Now Cordell gimping. I don't know. We've got the ankle curse this year. Maddox is out with an ankle. A ankles and below. Jay Thomas with the hurt foot. Boy, there's nothing more nagging than a, especially a high ankle sprain. So following the penalty, it moves it back to the 10 yard line. It's first down and 20 for Sheridan. It's McMillan. Going to operate out of an empty gun. Snap back, stands like a statue. Here comes the pressure, and he goes down to avoid the safety. And it looks like it was Mattia and Laster in there. Yeah, the, uh, th that was, he's got to have a clock in his head, man, because once you get to three Mississippi, that that is a gift. Yeah, give With Tom this. Mattia the sack. Yep. That's two sacks on the night, one for Walter Hicks and one for Tom Mattia. Second down and 28 for Sheridan. Back at the two yard line. McMillan again with no backs in there to protect him. Walter Hicks showing blitz. McMillan gonna roll, gonna throw. Starrett makes a diving catch around the 15 yard line. And it's gonna be third and long. That was a great catch. Yeah, it really was. A, a good play call, just something to get him out of the you know, out of the shadow of their own end zone a little bit. But that was a great catch. Dove for it. So That's third down and 15, Dio. Yeah. Panthers leading 35-12 with 940 to go in the first half. McMillan rolls to his right. Here comes Walter Hicks, hits him as he throws. Pass incomplete as Monson was in coverage, but credit Walter Hicks with the pressure. Well, that pressure, that hit, caused that ball to come out a little bit lower than he intended it for and, and intended it to, and that made it difficult to catch. So fourth down and 15, Sheridan at their own 15, and here's where if you get a stop, it can really snowball. Sheridan. Lining up to go for it. They stack receivers to the far side. McMillan awaits a snap. It's a low snap. He's looking to throw, looking downfield, firing through the hands of a leaping Chase Bradshaw, and it will go over to Benton, and Benton has a very short field to operate on. Well, th boy, they'll, they'll – uh... They'll not be happy about that <laughs> at the Yellow Jacket. Um, Benton's going to have the ball first and 10 on the 15-yard line. I wish you hadn't have said that. Pretty good Yellow burgers. Jacket. Oof. Pretty good just burger. Got hungry all uh, so. Yeah, I, well, it, my, I just thought of the Whippet. I haven't, oh. I haven't been to the Whippet in a long time. Do the, the uh, diners and dives of Grant County. Drew Davis pumps, throws, Will Carter underneath, and Will fights down to the 12 yard line. Boy, a lot of congestion in there, and he only picks up three, and Isaiah Gibson a little hobbled getting up. Isaiah, uh, if he gets a little hobbled, that, that just makes him mad. Yeah, <laughs> you can tell he was mad. He was hitting the turf. He was, why, why does this hurt? I, I kind of like him a little mad. He's got a little nasty streak in him. He goes Hulk smash when that happens. Seth Ochoa has checked into the huddle. Looks like they're going to give Isaiah a breather as a yellow jacket was uh, injured on the play, being helped up into the sideline. That is uh, Weston Ramsey, their starting defensive end. So second down and seven Panthers at the Jacket 12. Benton leading 35-12 with 9.09 remaining in the first quarter. Lice back in there, guys. Good to see him back out yeah. there. It's 
afraid we weren't going to see him the rest of the night when he went out, but he's in the slot to the near side. It's Drew Davis looking for Luther Tucker. Uh, that one's going to be picked off in the end yep. zone as Braxton Fox read it well, the strong safety, and picked it off. Well, you said it, Jim. He read it like a book. Nice, made a nice play on the ball, and uh, the, the Yellow Jackets definitely bail themselves out of, of an uh, almost certain situation. Well, yeah, yeah. And, and I think that's one of those where the, the play call, it, I don't know that Drew checked off any other receivers. Now, he may have, but it, it looked like that was, you know, that was a targeted play, and I think the safety just kind of read the quarterback's eyes right there and went went to the middle of the field where he was throwing. It looked like the play that Luther scored the touchdown in the salt bowl. Yes. And uh, Braxton Fox made a nice play. Another low snap. McMillan picks it up, flips it out to Zay Stevens. And Stevens going to be tackled, loses his helmet as Walter Hicks. Over there comes off the pile and a flag thrown by the linesman on the Sheridan sideline. Well, I think they got a face mask because it looked like Looked like his face, face mask. mask. Yeah. And because it was a face mask, Stevens, despite losing his helmet, is able to stay in the game. And get a first down. Yep. The other thing I was going to say on that interception is that play works a lot better when you have more than a 15-yard field. It yeah. yeah. Kind of helps the defense out when, you're, when you don't have to keep backing up. So first down Sheridan following the penalty. They hand it off to Stevens. Boy, he is smothered in the backfield. Nick Wright going to drop him for a loss. Back at the 33. Loss of two. That's Nick Wright's first tackle of the night, uh, which a little bit surprising because he's he's been really playing well. I think they've been running it opposite side from him. Fake to Stevens, Panther pressure coming. McMillan has to unload it. It's well overthrown as Landon Jackson, the nearest player to the football. It'll be third down and 12. Yeah, McMillan never even intended to complete that pass. He, he had way too much heat on him and he just got it out of play. Really impressed with uh, with our defensive backs tonight. I know that they, you know, they scored on a long, you know, touchdown pass, but that's it. Yeah. Other than the run, defense has really done well in the defensive back. And some excellent pass breakups yeah. in this first half by the secondary. So, offered Roy and Mattia up front, dig in on this third down and 12 as McMillan looking to throw triple coverage on Starrett. It's incomplete. And it'll be fourth and 12. Well, Landon Jackson was eyeing that second pick of the night and uh, just thrown a little bit too far. Yeah, Landon's going to be, he's got his hands on his hips. He's run, He's been running all over this field because he tends to be where the ball is. Yeah. The old nose for the football, Landon Jackson. Four down and 12, Sheridan going to go for it from their own 33. 8.04 to go in the first half. Millen. Ball knocked loose and it's picked up and Jay Alford's going to score. Walter Hicks knocked it loose and a pick to click. Touchdown scoop and score for Dio. Good call, Dio. How I, about that? I, you know, I mean, the defensive line, they don't always get a ton of stats, you know, but we got to give them love and I'm, I'm, I'm proud of Alford for that one right there. That Not only does it help me, but Man, what a good defensive play. Just a heads up play as that ball bounced kind of right into his arms, but Alfred, Alfred showing some speed over there. And, and he was not your first choice. <laughs> he wasn't. I tried to take Rob's pick from yeah, him. Yeah, plan B gets in the end zone. And uh, look at Jay Alford jumping up and down. He is elated, his teammates with him. Brad Harris with the big fist bump. Terry, break it down. I don't, I don't, hopefully I can break it down on the air because I've, I've been off. But, um, yeah, he, he scooped and scored that. And, you know, he's got a lot of speed, Dio, and, and it's a little deceptive. And he scooped that up and outran the backfield. And, you, and we did say Hicks caused that fumble, correct? Yes. Okay, yeah. I got that down. Hicks coming in there and 
playing big tonight. How many yards you give him, Bobby, on that? 29, 29 yard scoop and score. And the defense back to back weeks have scored touchdowns. You had the old Marcus pick six last week. The Jay offered scoop and score this week. It's 42 12. I, I was uh, dealing with some technical stuff. Did, did we miss an extra point there? No, no we, we, got we got it. We're just, okay. we are dealing with some. Yeah, Our yeah. Our broadcast guys are dealing with some technical stuff, and so there it goes. It's the kick into the end zone. Man, what a night. Is that six in a row? Honeycutt flexing tonight. Seven in a row. Yeah, seven duh. touchdowns. Seven times seven is 42, Dio. Do math. <laughs> <laughs> so what was that ACT score again? Over 30, thank yeah. you. Really? Yeah, well. Seven times seven is uh, 49. Just Whatever. I can't do math. <laughs> 30. I forget about the opening kickoff. And I'm, I'm That's blown. why I was thinking six, so I did do math right. Just can't think under pressure. <laughs> McMillan under pressure. Stevens makes the catch, and he is going to be rocked. By JTP. Yeah, speaking of pressure, there's a lot of pressure in that backfield on the receiver, on the quarterback, on that line of scrimmage. Well, Panthers are really bringing it. I was about to say they they are they turned it up these last two two series and and they are coming after it. Just licking their chops on the underneath throws. So stand up defensive ends, Matia and Seals on this second down play. As they fire, catch is made by DePriest. He's going to be dumped at the 23-yard line. It'll be third and seven. Weston Monson getting in there on the tackle. That's tough for a linebacker to cover that little slant route like that, like he just. So third down and seven, five receiver set for the Jackets. McMillan pointing at something. Now going to reset, snap back, looking, firing to the near sideline. Sturrett makes the catch. Tyson Jordan going to make the tackle, but that's going to be good for a jacket first down at the 31. Boy, Tyson Jordan's going to watch that on film next week and realize that he just missed a pick six. He floated that ball out there. Tyson saw it, but he, was, he had already turned his body inside and couldn't turn around to break on the ball. Had he had that time, there was nothing but daylight in front of him. Yep. So one down lineman, two stand-up ends for the Panthers. Antonio Shelton getting some time at linebacker. And uh, Ty Mattia is going to smother McMillan back at the 25 for a loss of six. Yeah, that was a timing play, Dio. They were running the jet sweep, and the, the ball sailed high, and he just couldn't get the ball to him. Second down and 16 following the loss. Back at the 25 yard line. So they bring the receivers tight to the formation and looked like a movement on the Sheridan offensive line. will back them up five more. That's not what they want. So that'll back them up to the 20. It'll be second down and 21. Hey, the back porch brigade is uh, going all over Benton tonight. Brian and Leslie Black got to visit with Brian today and pick up his contribution for the shutout pizza party that was held yesterday. And you know, uh, he, he and Leslie are always on the back porch with the Panthers. Yeah, we're kind of in and out tonight. So a little internet. Little technical difficulties with uh, the internet connection, but the, uh, the deer stand. But the game must go on. The right? game must go on, and uh, yeah, the uh, the deer stand has not been uh, loaded with internet down here. It's always <laughs> a challenge in Sheridan. It's like Getting a the real deer out. stand. No internet. <laughs> they just need. I'm to glad get, we got electricity. They just need to get that jet pack like we have down at Duck Camp, and uh, it and if a certain internet. <laughs> 
company was, or a cell phone company was wise, they would advertise with us, and then we could talk about their name. Ah, Terry, <laughs> ever the marketer. It's a great idea, Terry. So while we've got this time out, let me remind you, tomorrow is the 50th anniversary of Old Fashioned Day in downtown Benton. All the festivities kick off at 9 a.m. and will conclude at 4 p.m. There's a great lineup of activities and craft vendors. The Ridge Walkers Band will perform at 145, the Best Beard and Mullet Contest. I got a chance at that, Jim. Will take place at 1 o'clock. So if your hair is business in the front and party in the back, Dio, be at the main stage by one and see if you can take home the crown. And yes, there will be funnel cakes. Free funnel cakes to the winner. Funnel cakes and mullets. There's nothing more Saline County than that <laughs> right there. I'm gonna have to go get the sides trimmed up a little bit to get more mulletized. Gotta get ready. See if Mama Carrie could do that tomorrow morning. Oh, McMullen is going to be dropped again. It's Dominic Roy off the edge. And I tell you, they've stood up the ends, widened them out, and they're having free reign at McMillan. They sure are. A lot of pressure coming from the middle, and those ends are collapsing in on him. And I like that play by Roy. He, he saw the quarterback. He saw the ball right there, and Roy actually tried to, you know, reach for the ball actually first before he went for the sack. Sack exchange open for business tonight. So on third down and forever, they get it to Stevens. And Roy Stevens. on the tackle. How about that, the end getting out there, Dio? Good hustle. Mason Lassiter is also playing well up front. He's been in a lot of plays. So fourth down and 20, Sheridan. And they will go for it. No, nope, McMullen's going to punt it. And uh, we have seen Sheridan pump more times in this first half than they punted all season. And the Panthers gonna have uh, their worst field position of the first half, Dio, in, at their own 39. Well, maybe this drive will take more than 48 seconds. Well, um, <laughs> maybe not. This is a big drive for the Panther offense. Yeah, 30 point lead. With a 30-point lead, a touchdown here gets us uh, into the mercy rule at halftime. So first down, Panthers. Garrett Pilkington over the football at the 39-yard line to snap it back to Drew Davis. He's looking down oh. the field. He's going to throw underneath. Will Carter makes a nice catch Ooh. on the Benton sideline, and he had Scott Nethery scurrying for cover. Well, I'm going to tell you, that was a great catch. How in the world did he make this catch? Watch, watch this on the replay. What a fantastic catch. I mean, <laughs> reach down and that is textbook. I haven't seen Nethery move that quick. Since last Saturday? Since last Saturday. Yeah, I think we've got that in the roll. We'll have to show that at halftime. Is uh, Luther Tucker with running room. Gets a block downfield from Coolis. Looking for another block from Elias. Ball knocked loose. What? How in the world did that thing pop free and somehow Sheridan came up with it? What, what just happened? Popped right into his hands. I Oh, my word. De Leon comes up with the fumble recovery. Can we re-rack the end of that run, Jonathan? <laughs> I, I'm not sure what happened. What in the world happened? Well, he, he, Man, he puts on a great move there to get yeah. to the outside. He put Wallingford on And then keeps his state. head down. He's still got the ball tucked. Braxton Fox. That was just a good strip. Yep. Well played by the defense. Right into the defender's arms. That's Fox who made the uh, interception in the end zone. So, first down Sheridan. And Brady Dillon checks in and carries the football. And that's a nice run to the 32 for 13 yards. Well, and that's, you know, his dad, Dwayne Dillon, coaches their ninth grade. I played football with him in high school, and we were talking about that last year. Brady Dillon was their quarterback and was, uh, you know, I think finished fourth in the conference overall for passing yards. And so I'm sure he's excited to be back out there at quarterback. Dillon going to scramble and he's going to be dropped. And Owen Seals. 
Going to be credited with the tackle at the 30-yard line, a loss of two. Boy, the sack exchange is open, Terry. Yeah, it sure is. Dominic Roy in on that tackle, too, or uh, on that sack. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, they're really putting the pressure on them. So second down and 12. Is Dylan going to shovel it underneath to Zay Stevens? JTP going to make the tackle at the 36-yard line, and it'll be third and six. Yeah, great defense that time by Jay Thomas. He was kind of spying Stevens there and was able to get up there and make a tackle and keep him from getting a first down. 2.40 to go in the first half. Dylan. Steps up, right into Jay Alford's hands. Ball comes loose. How about this? Scoop and score. Last time it was Hicks to Alford. No. This time Alford to Hicks. Holy smokes. Oh, my. Unbelievable. Well, there's that touchdown that we needed. Uh, there and, it is. And the Panthers would. Two scoops and scores this this uh, game. Yeah, two <laughs> defensive touchdowns, and that is crazy. Hicks to Alford, now that Alford returns the favor, says, here, you get one, boss. Oh, my. Honeycutt's extra point is good, and that is a 37-point Panther to lead at 49-12 to with 2.21 to go in the first half. Let's watch it again. He just strips it, and the ball falls right at Walter Hicks' feet. And, and by the way, I, I don't know if you guys know this, but I was informed today that that Walter Walter Hicks isn't known as Walter Hicks outside of Benton. He's known as Hitman Hicks. That's what Hitman. That's what Hicks. people are calling him. So the Hitman runs one in for the touchdown. So. Three defensive touchdowns in the last game and a half. And the, uh, well, the PDC is making a statement tonight for overtime. Wow, yes, they was... are. Of course, the national show that's following Sheridan football around. You can watch all the episodes on YouTube and can't wait for the Panther episode to come out. As Kind of Panthers have stolen the thunder tonight. It's kind of like watching Jerry Springer. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, we haven't heard any freaking thing from you in a while. <laughs> Love it, Jim. I tell you what, our defense on the sideline, they are having a time. I mean, it's its the most fun I've seen them have all year. Yeah, they just uh, kind of pinning their ears back and uh, making a, a mockery of it in this first half. So... Well, five sacks, two two forced fumbles for pick sixes, an interception, two interceptions. Stevens can't make the catch as JTP was there to greet him with a shoulder to the solar plexus and complete second down and 10. Well, that's a second really tough shot that Jay Thomas Peppers put on uh, Stevens. He's like, welcome to high school. Well, I'm, I'm thinking that, that he may not be on the Christmas card list. He's not going to be on Zay Stevens' Christmas card list. Jack Johnson in at middle linebacker to give Walter Hicks a breather. Laster's in there at nose to give Alford a breather. Is McMillan going to lob it down? Field for Bradshaw. Oh. Landon Jackson almost came up with a remarkable interception. Boy, I really thought he was going to get it, Dio. I, I, I thought he, he went up and he, he high pointed the ball and just couldn't come down with it. Well, that was you awfully close. Two big plays, notwithstanding the PDC has been awesome. This awesome. Half. Third down and 10 for the Jackets. Blake Dorsey, the D-line coach, Brad Harris, the DC down there looking at their defense, trying to make a stop as that ball thrown low and diving to get it. They're going to credit Parker Mullins with the catch at the 31-yard line for a first down. Well, they say he made the catch. 
And if he did, that was a great catch. Yeah. Two minutes to go in the first half. Benton leading 49 to 12 as they hand it off to Eli Turner, the big back. And he's going to rumble down to the 40-yard line. Tough run for Turner of nine yards. Yeah, that's a good run. Quite, quite frankly, he carried the defense for about four of those nine. Jack Johnson getting in on the ac action to, on that tackle. Jay Thomas coming off the field. Nobody running on yet. So Brad Harris will call a timeout. Bring the troops over and visit with them. Thursday night is the 17th annual Ghost Town in downtown Benton, presented by Hurricane Creek Federal Credit Union. You can dress up the kiddos in their favorite costume and walk the downtown square where all the local shops will be handed out candy. Ghost Town begins at 5.30 and runs until 8 o'clock in downtown Benton on Thursday. And then next Saturday, a week from tomorrow, the annual Benton Police versus Benton Fire Charity Softball Game will be held at 9.30 a.m. at Bernard Holland Park. Come support Benton's first responders in a fun, competitive game that will benefit the Shop with a Cop program and the Firefighters Memorial Fund. Terry, I know causes like that very dear to your heart and a good opportunity to support uh, two great, great groups in our town. Boy, it sure is, and, and I, I know I speak for a lot of people that appreciate all of the service that our policemen and firemen provide to our community. Uh, they are very well loved. Absolutely. Second down and one out of the timeout for Or Sheridan. At the 40-yard line, swing it to Stevens, and Stevens yeah. is going to be tackled by Monson, but Walter Hicks got a big old mess of face masks. I think every referee except for the line judge on this side threw their flag, even the guy that's 30 yards away from well, the Well, i got to be honest with you. If I'd have had a flag, I'd have thrown it <laughs> oh, yeah. myself. Yeah, I mean, that, that, was, was, the most, that, was, the, that was the most obvious one I've seen. I didn't see who actually made the tackle on it, though. Monson. Was it Monson? Yeah. Okay. Monson made the tackle. Boy, the tackle chart is crazy. This defensive chart is crazy looking tonight. A lot of, lot of folks getting in on the, the tackles, but just all those extra plays made are. So a uh, little reverse. They give it to DePriest. He's going to throw it downfield. Oh, Marcus! Picked it off. How about another interception for O. Marcus King? Wow. Once again, Dio, he saw, he watched the quarterback, he saw the pass, he adjusted his coverage, and went up and got the ball. He had to wrestle that one a while. He did. That was a great play. And I mean, O. Marcus is, is he's been outmatched size wise <laughs> with every receiver he's gone against this this entire year. And he went up and, and fought for that one. That's three interceptions for the PDC in the first half. And two for O'Marcus. Everybody tries to pick on O'Marcus because of his size. Mistake. And he they, once again he, plays mistake. bigger. Yeah, well, you saw him go up in the air. He plays like he's six foot four. Drew going to throw it underneath. Catch made inbounds by Bryson Griffiths at the seventh, at the 20 yard line. Second down throw for Will Carter just beyond his reach as Will had gotten open in the middle of the field. It's going to be third down. Boy, that was such a beautiful route. Will Will ran that. That was a corner post, and he runs that and just turns to the you know turns to the outside towards the Benton sideline, gets the hips of the defender to turn, and then cuts right back into the middle. And the defender had to wheel on him. No chance of the defender being able to make a play if that ball would have been been on the money. So third down and five Panthers. First half dominated by the Maroon. Is Drew going to throw on the run? And the catch made along the Benton sideline by Carson Collett for a Benton first down. So they'll move the chains. Yeah, he got out of bounds, stopped the clock. Excellent route. Well, and that's a great throw. Drew, Drew has to throw over the linebacker there. Tried to get it to Collett. Covered up that time. Collett got a hand on it, incomplete. Second and 10 
49 seconds to go in the first half. That was a little dangerous there, <laughs> popping that ball up like that. Yeah. Now, this cover two look that they're given. Stay with us at halftime. The Hamilton Family Dentistry Halftime Show guest will be Braylon Russell. Oh. Threw a little high for Poot that time incomplete, and it'll be third down and 10. And no milking the clock here, boys, with 44 seconds to half and Benton up 49-12. It's all gas, no breaks tonight for Benton. Two passes a little high. He's got to get that pass down, get it completed, and in open space so his receivers can do their thing. I'd look for a little quick slant maybe with Will Carter across the middle. And a motion Tucker out of the backfield. Drew looks at him. Now comes back to Coolis incomplete, and it'll be fourth down. I'm not sure what's going on with Drew this series, but his that's three passes in a row. He's yeah. just been a little bit off. It, Panthers going to punt it away. First time we've seen Dawson Daves tonight. As Isaiah Gibson will snap it back. Dawson averages 34.3 yards a punt. Long of 45 on the season. As, uh, Benton took over with 122. Going to punt it away with 39 seconds remaining in the half. Braxton Fox is going to go back. Sheridan does not have a punt return on the season. Typically do not put anybody back as Dawson shanks this one. Off his foot near the Benton sideline. Fox is going to, good gravy. Going to dive on it back at the 28-yard line. You can tell they don't practice punt returns. Well, I was just about to say, and what you just saw is the end result of not practicing punt returns because that was a really bad idea. Who was it that made that tackle? Uh, that would have been uh, nobody. Oh, I didn't see it. Yeah, I, I, he, he just fell on, the, just ball fell on when, the ball. Oh, I was responding. I was responding to texts about our internet connectivity issues. <laughs> any any cell provider offering to uh, no pick it up for free advertising? McMillan gonna throw to nobody incomplete. Second and ten. Second down. So I think we could say Frank Hobbs on the last tackle and Frank Hobbs the intended <laughs> receiver on that one. <laughs> oh, <Old> Frank. <laughs> so it was a 49-point first half last week at Sylvan Hills, matched by that tonight by the Benton Panthers as they're going to throw a little hook and lateral and uh, – Panthers not fooled as Isaac Hill is going to make the tackle. He'll get close to the first down. I think he's going to be just a little shy. Yeah, Sheridan's going to pull out all the stops right here. They want to try to get another score on the board before halftime. Well, it's kind of critical that they do. Even a field goal uh, would keep them at least on the field. I, I, I mean... It's a huge lead by the Panthers, but you know the the game right now inside the game is trying to stay inside that sportsmanship rule. Yeah. Anybody up for a 24-minute second half? Yes. Yeah. So uh, we want the PDC to hold right here. We get that running second half clock. Won't have to worry about milking the clock any in the second half. Yeah, I, I mean, the only reason to the only reason to not have the mercy rule in the second half is to score some more touchdowns. Well, fair get point. Some more, get some more uh, get some more stats. I'm gonna tell you, the defense may uh, they've got two on the board tonight, Dios. I mean, the defense is this is the funnest. Uh, I mean, like Rob said, this has been the funnest to watch, so I know it's had to be fun to play. So third down and one for Sheridan at their own 38-yard line. McMillan going to take the pass. He's going to throw up the Sheridan sideline beyond the reach of 
his intended receiver. And it's good to see Mason Mangrum back out there. We hadn't seen him the last few weeks watching their huddle film. Very important receiver for them the last couple of years. And He's got speed. Yes, he does. So fourth and one, Sheridan going to go for it naturally with 19 seconds to go. Trips to the short side. Zay Stevens going to motion out there. McMillan's going to keep. I don't think he made it. Oh, or uh, Ty Mattia was the first one to get him. Walter Hicks finished him off short of the 39-yard line. It looks like it's going to be Benton football. That is. The PDC holds. I bet Sheridan's kind of feeling like Arkansas felt against Tennessee uh, with those fourth down plays last Saturday. Just so close. So uh, at the Sheridan 38, 15 seconds to go. Benton leading 49 to 12. All gas, no brakes, fellas. Snap back to Drew. Looking, throwing for Collett. Collett breaks a tackle. He's going to be down to the 21-yard line, and Brad Harris is going to use his final timeout. And I wonder if he's not going to give Garrett Honeycutt a shot here. That may be exactly what he does. He may take one for the end zone and then do it. He's got seven seconds. You got seven seconds, no timeouts now. No timeouts. But you got to throw for the end zone if, you, if you're going to run the play. But you do have a high school clock operator, and I wouldn't trust having a second play coming after this. Just going to say. Well, <laughs> high school clock Not, operator I think, that I think is that's, a Sheridan resident? I, I mean, I would assume so. <laughs> Not that he's a high school kid, but just saying he's running a hometown clock. Yeah. I think that's very astute. Yeah. Hey, I do want to give a shout out to uh, Rick Treadway, the athletic director down here. He's a Benton resident. And uh, I was awfully uh, glad to hear an invocation before the game tonight. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And I uh, want to commend Rick and the Sheridan administration for uh, – that's something that was a staple of high school football games that you just don't see very often anymore. So, going to get Garrett Honeycutt with a opportunity like. to make a chip shot for him. So it'll be a 38-yard field goal try. Snap from right, perfect. Hold from Carter, perfect. Boy, Garrett Honeycutt drilled that one with three seconds to go in the first half. It is 52 to 12. Is that? Man, 38, that would have been good from 58. I think they found that ball over in Belfast. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, one of those kids over there at the band has a football in his tuba right now. That's Is that the band over there? Legal use of tuba? Yeah. I, and I'm going to take back what I said because that only took four seconds off the clock. I figured it would go all the way to zero, but no, they're going to. So a slow trigger if the home team might get the ball back. I mean, I don't know. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it didn't take as much time as I figured it would on that. Oh, what a half. 52 to 12. Panthers lead it. Look who just walked in the box. Braylon Russell. We're going to draw straws hey, to see who gets to interview him tonight. What's up, bro? It's uh, one of the heroes of the Hogs on Saturday and their win over Tennessee, former Panther Braylon Russell going to be with us at halftime. It's Garrett Honeycutt's going to squib kick it. Sheridan going to pick it up, and wow, Parker Mullins is pummeled at the 25-yard line as the clock expires on a first half that you take two big plays away. It was almighty maroon in that first half as Brad Harris's Panthers lead 52 to 12 at halftime tonight over Sheridan. We are going to take a break, come back with the Hamilton Family Dentistry halftime show, and we'll visit with Braylon Russell on the Benton Football Network.
Is there anything more exciting on Friday nights than taking the field in front of your hometown fans? One of the most rewarding things about football is working with your team to move the ball across the goal line. My favorite part about football though is playing on a team. Uh, and when it comes to that, when it comes time to buy a refinance, you've got the team at Neo Home Loans to help you get across the goal line. Hamilton Family Dentistry, dental care that grows with you. We're family owned and are ready to provide dental care for your family. From your newborn baby to your great grandparents, we see them all. Give us a call at 653-2422 or come visit us at 2422 Spring Hill Road. Needing to sell your house or looking for your dream home, Scott Cobb and his team at Truman Ball Real Estate will make it happen. Whether you're buying, selling, or investing, Scott will guide you every step of the way. Scott has been selling real estate in Saline County and beyond since 1996. He prides himself in building a relationship with his clients and caring for them like family. He knows the market, he knows the neighborhoods, and more importantly, he knows what it takes to get you the best deal. Give Scott a call today at 501-351-2622. Truman Ball Real Estate, where you're more than just a transaction. Panther fans, this is Jim Gardner. You probably recognize my voice from watching Benton football, but there is something I love more than talking about the Panthers, and that is sharing the love of Jesus Christ. I'd like to invite you to worship with us on Sunday at 10 a.m. at Northside Church of Christ, located next door to Saleem Memorial Hospital. I wanna share with you about the God who knows all about you and loves you anyway. For more information, go to northsidecfc.info. Is there anything more exciting on Friday nights than taking the field in front of your hometown fans? One of the most rewarding things about football is working with your team to move the ball across the goal line. My favorite part about football though is playing on a team. Uh, and when it comes to that, when it comes time to buy a refinance, you've got the team at Neo Home Loans to help you get across the goal line. Any lasting structure begins with a good blueprint and every good blueprint must be designed specifically for the people it serves. The Benton Event Center, Riverside Park, and the new Boys and Girls Club, all designed by the professional architects at Black, Corley, Owens, and Hughes. They understand the Benton community and are a major part of our economic success. Proud sponsors of Benton Panther football and valued partners for our community. Yeah. yeah. All right, welcome back to uh, Sheridan, where it is 52 to 12, Panthers lead at halftime. Is uh, we have the Hamilton Family Dentistry halftime show and welcome in our old buddy Braylon. Hey, how Braylon you doing? Russell. You know, I was thinking all day, knowing you were going to be in here, that Panther Live, I tried so hard to get you to sing and you never would do it. Nah. So, so here's your chance. You going to belt out some tunes for us? Singing? What you want to hear? Yeah, just sing me your favorite song. Just, just let her rip. Uh, I don't know. Well, let me ask some questions. You can yeah, think let about me, it in the back think, of your mind, okay? Think. Because I mean, that was that was one of the things last year. Braylon is the guy always singing in the locker room, mm -hmm. and we never could get him to sing at Panther Live. So I thought, well, we'll give it one more try. How's college going, man? College is going well. Uh, really fun. Really nice experience. Uh, Football for that point. Uh, this is going well in football too. Um, getting able to get some touches as a true freshman is Absolutely. always exciting. So, what was that like Saturday, fourth quarter, Tennessee, huge SEC game, and you go in there on the game-winning drive and just show up huge? Uh, it felt amazing to know that my coaches trusted me and um, put me out there in the game-winning drive. Um, you know, uh, when your number's called. You gotta produce, and when my number is called, my dad preaches. Your number is called, produce. And when my number is called, I tried to yeah, go that, out there and do my thing. That 20 yard run to get uh, the Hogs down in the scoring position, that, that I, I gotta say, that's probably the biggest thrill you've had as a college yeah. running back so yeah, far. That's been the biggest thrill yeah. I've had. Yeah. What's it like being down there on the field in that stadium with the pressure and the tension? You're looking at big SEC guys on the other side, mm -hmm. 75,000 people cheering. I can't imagine what that must be like. Yeah, it's loud. You really can't 
I mean, when you're on the field, just you're tuning everything out. You're trying to get the play call. You're trying to know what to do. You're trying to get lined up. Trying to get in the right alignment. Uh, all that stuff matters. Um, trying to think about your footwork. What, what your footwork is going to be. All that stuff matters. So, um, yeah, the people, the people there is amazing. But like when you're on the field, you don't really. You don't really care that they're in the stands. You just know they're in the stands. Like, you're trying to get the job done. Yeah. So, you're able to block it out a little bit and yes, really sir. focus on the job at hand or yes, just sometimes just the noise and the environment. I know y'all played at Auburn. Mm -hmm. You played uh, at Oklahoma State. And those those environments, man, that, that's got to be tough at times. Yeah, it's tough at times. But, you know, we built we built the brotherhood. We built that. We, we know how to communicate with each other and the right way to communicate with each other while we're on the field. So, that's really nice that we, we set that bond between each other that we yeah. can go out there in, a, in any environment and uh, produce. Yeah. So let me let me take it back to the recruiting process just a minute. You you were getting a lot of attention even in junior high, mm -hmm. and then it really took off in high school. And uh, I know Tennessee really wanted you to come play play there. So getting to play in an Arkansas Tennessee game, uh, what was it maybe at the end of the day that really sealed the deal for Arkansas for you? Uh, uh, Coach Pittman, and it, it was home. Uh, you know, um, you really can't beat staying at home in a program that's trying to rebuild, and they really want you to come and rebuild it with them. So for them to keep recruiting me, even when I decommitted, was like, okay, my home state really wants me, really wants me to come pr succeed on with the Hogs. Yeah. So what's uh, Coach Pittman like? He's funny. <laughs> 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 He's just always cracking jokes. Uh Always just cracking jokes, really, to be honest. Yeah. Yes, sir. He, he keeps it kind of uh, loose for you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Joey yes, him. What's been the hardest part from transitioning from high school to college from a football standpoint? Uh, Hardest part is, uh, I would say, probably time management because <laughs> you're in high school, you, you're in the building. So time management is like they're telling you and you got to go here, telling you when to go, to go there. In high, college, you know where you're supposed to go. You got to get there, and uh, by by yourself, there's nobody telling you to get to class. There's nobody telling you oh, you got to be at practice at this time. Well, they tell you, but I mean, you got to get there. It's not nobody like forcing you to get there or calling your phone. I mean, you, you're late. You're late. Do your punishment. Yeah. So you, the responsibility. Responsibility. Yeah, big time. So tell me, what what is a uh, now that you're in season? What does a typical day look like for Braylon Russell, as a true freshman playing in the SEC? What what does a day look like for you? Uh, day is uh, 6 a.m. workouts. Either you're either in the 6 a.m. group, 7 a.m. group, or 8 a.m. group. You got one of them workouts, then you got study hall after. So you go to study hall, you do all your work in study hall. Then you go practice from like 2:30 to 6:30, and then you're back in study hall. Or if you have class before practice, if you got classes. So if you got classes, you go to classes, and then practice from 2.30, like 6.30. Then you're back in study hall at night. For freshmen, so you're back in study hall at night. And then you're at home. You get any time to sleep in there? Uh, we got to sleep around 11. 11? 10.30, 11. Yeah. yeah. Are you in the 6 a.m. workout group? I'm in the 8. I got lucky. I'm uh. in the 8. I'm in the 8. So was that just uh, luck of the draw? Or luck did the, you get to say, hey, I want to be in this group? Oh, uh, luck, luck of the draw. Luck yeah. of the draw. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, you miss high school football, Amy? I miss it a lot. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What's it like coming back watching your old old boys play here tonight? It's like, man, I was just playing football here not even a year ago. Yeah. Well, it was a year ago, but, like, doesn't even feel like a year ago. Yeah. Have you declared a major yet? Uh, Right now I'm still really searching, but for now I'm doing communication. Uh, Don't know where God's going to lead me to my next major, but we'll see. Well, hey, Panthers are up 40. You're a communication major. You want to do play-by-play -play for the second half? Let you get a little practice in? Play-by-play. -play. I wouldn't be good at that. I was going to say, I, I'll go sit the bleachers <laughs> that you have the second half. I wouldn't be good at that. What about singing? I'm not good at that either. Oh, the only, come on, People man. say I can sing because I'd just be in the locker room just playing around and singing tunes but it's not like a oh i can sing type of thing yeah yeah so any memory stand out to you from your time as a benton panther any game or any particular play you got got a favorite from your time playing for uh, coach harris and the panthers oh uh, let's see um 
playing? I probably would say the Marion game last year. The Marion game last year. Yeah. yeah. That was a good one. Yeah. Uh, just because there was so much going into that game where social media was blasting, um, kids were texting back and forth, uh, just so much emotion going into the game that we came in the game with a level mindset and we pulled through that yeah. game. That was probably the closest game, uh, the only game I've seen the whole team come close and just, you know, like we had to get it done because people were talking and mm -hmm. internet was buzzing. So, mm -hmm. In the Marion game, your first year as a Panther, you had, I, if I remember right, about an 88-yard touchdown run uh, that game at Marion. Yeah, well, it's coming from that side. Yeah. And, yeah, seen the hole. Seen the hole, but you had to press it first, cut off the back leg, left, left leg, and – Get, get vertical. Yeah. And it just opened right up. I remember like it was yesterday. Yeah. So what about what about uh, these guys running the ball for the Panthers this year? A little bit different than, than Braylon. They're not the big power guys. I see a lot of a lot of talent. A lot of talent. 18's good. Um, Luther. Yeah. Luther's his name. Yeah, he's good. Uh, I seen that uh, fumble he had. Just got to hold on to the ball. Um, high and tight. He'll he'll learn. To playoffs. When playoffs come around, you know you got to uh, hold it high and tight because there's no time to waste, yeah. no mistakes to be made in playoffs. But, yeah, he, he'll get it down. He's still young. He'll get it down. So uh, where are the Hogs going the rest of the way? You get that big win over Tennessee, and I'm sure, man, it's been prey off the charts during this bye week of practice, a lot of uh, enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. what, what do you see the rest of the way for, for uh, your team? I see us going to work every day, like we always do, and putting our head down, trusting in God, believing in God, and going to get going to get the job done. Versus teams we are not supposed to beat, according to the internet and the stats, paper stats. But you know, just going to work every day and just proving it to ourselves, because the only people that can determine the win is the people in our locker room. So. We just got to stop listening to the outside and just do what we do. Yeah. Terry, you got something to add? You know, you, you've said a couple of times about the Internet and the talk back and forth and the texting. How much of that plays into the games, both at the high school level but also at the college level? Uh, It plays a lot into the game. You can really wake someone up with texting them on social media or you can make someone scared by texting them on the internet. But yeah, there was an incident where some Texas a and uh, player sent a blanket to someone on the Mizzou team. It woke him up. Uh, I don't think he caught a pass. So yeah, it does a lot for both high school and college. That's very interesting. Because you know, you, you see the bar stool uh, sports uh, Twitter wars, as I call them, mm -hmm. and uh, and some of that's uh, really funny, but you never really know how much players take that, how serious players take that when it comes to motivating them on the field. Yeah, yeah, it motivates. See, if someone texts me, it definitely motivates me. So if it motivates me. What, what, can, sure. can, I, can I text you each week and just <laughs> tell you how bad you're going to do and then you just show us? <laughs> yeah, you can text me. <laughs> <laughs> one of our favorite Benton Panthers, Braylon Russell, and I might add one of your predecessors at running back, Zach Wallace, helped lead ASU on a game-winning drive Saturday. Mm -hmm. So you had two Benton boys leading Arkansas and Arkansas State on game-winning drives on Saturday night, basically at the same time. So, yes, sir. Braylon, we're proud of you, bud. Thank you, thank you. And uh, it's good to see you. Thanks for coming down on the bye week and uh, supporting the Panthers. Yes, That's sir. Awesome. So, uh, Braylon Russell, our Hamilton Family Dentistry halftime guest. We'll take a break, come back. Dio and Terry will break down the halftime stats. It's Benton Lee cheered in 52-12. True Gentlemen and True Boutique are Saline County's premier shopping destinations. 
No matter the occasion, let us help you find your style. From the beach to the golf course, the office, or even a special night out, come check out our huge selection of merchandise. We even provide suit and tuxedo rentals. Located in downtown Benton in front of the Farmer's Market Pavilion, it would be our pleasure to serve you. We are proud of our Benton Panthers and wish them luck this season. Go Panthers! Hey, this is Miranda Kirkendall and I'm the owner of Solux Aesthetics. We're a med spa right here in the heart of downtown Benton. We pride ourselves on having advanced aesthetic injectors, a certified licensed esthetician, and we promise you the most comfortable and fun environment in town. Our address is 149 South Market Street. Our phone number is 501-249-4177, or you can check us out on our website at www.soluxar.com, or you can check us out on our social media sites on Facebook and Instagram. When you bank at First Security, you're choosing better for yourself and fellow Arkansans. Better service from friendly professionals who really invest in your goals. Better solutions with convenient tools and smart resources. And better support for the things that matter to you, as well as the communities that matter to us all. Because finding your better at First Security makes Arkansas better too. First Security. Bank better. Member FDIC. Elliott Electrical is a proud supporter of Benton Panther football. For over 35 years, Elliott Electrical has been providing reliable, efficient, high-quality electric service to Saline County and Central Arkansas. From lighting design and planning to street and parking lot installation, Elliott Electrical has all the lighting services to keep your home and businesses illuminated. For a free estimate for all your electrical needs, contact Elliott Electrical today at 501-315-7539. Welcome back to the Hamilton Halftime Report with the Benton Panthers elite in Sheridan Yellow Jackets, 52 to 12, and Dio. The stat board is pretty nice for the Benton Panthers, 322 yards total offense in that first half. Yeah, and you know, what kind of sticks out to me just immediately from the jump is, is the disparity, actually the similarity, I guess, in first downs. Sheridan actually kind of leading the board with 12, but but that is a, a symptom of the fact that our drives have been two play drives. You don't get a lot of first downs when you have two <laughs> play drives. And so, you know, just the efficiency, 29 plays, thir 322 yards. I mean, Terry, that's more than 10 yards a play. You're averaging more than a first down every time you, you, you touch the ball. That's that's what really sticks out. But Well, and, and, and as far as averages, how about 18 yards of carry in rushing? Oh, right? I mean, that's that's phenomenal. But let's talk about the defense because the defense shows up on these stats with that 3 of 11 for Sheridan on third down conversions and 0 of 4 on the fourth down conversions. That is – like, that's huge against a Kevin Kelly team because of the style that they play. You know, he tries – like, that's his whole theory on the statistics is, it, you know, why does he onside kick every time? Well, it's because if you can get one or two, you can you can turn the tide of a ball game. Well, fourth downs, if you can if you can get a, a couple of fourth down conversions. Now, his Pulaski Academy teams converted at a much higher rate, but uh, Benton touched or Benton uh, PDC doing a great job of, of holding them to zero. Yeah, and the, and the Yellow Jackets only three of fifteen on third and fourth downs, and you know um, you know the Benton came into the game averaging about, giving up about 34, 35% on third and fourth down. And tonight in the first half, only 20%. So like you said, the PDC really showing up. Panthers did give up 230 yards in total offense, but about a, over half of that was on two plays. And yeah. so otherwise the Benton defense has really been playing strong. Well, and let's, let's look at some defensive stats. We're not gonna have them up on the screen, but Five turnovers, uh, plus five turnovers for the Benton Panthers. Well, no, I guess it's not plus five because we also lost a fumble and had an interception. So we're plus three, but five total turnovers for, for the Benton Panthers, three interceptions, two fumbles, which were both returned for touchdowns. So a couple of pass deflections, uh, three pass deflections, and then you've got Hicks and, and Landon Jackson leading the charge with six tackles each right now, but followed by... Hill, Roy, and Pepper with four each. So uh, spreading the love on, on defense. A lot of guys getting in on tackles, but just big plays on both sides of the ball. Well, and the Panthers also turning the ball over a little bit. Uh, yeah. But, but only giving up 
Four of 57 uh, with penalties and yards, and, and candidly, 15 of that uh, was, was a bad call. Yeah. And so the Panthers kind of playing clean tonight. Haven't taken care of the ball clean. They've, they've given up a fumble, which was a great defensive play. Actually, both of them were great defensive plays. Drew hung one up there, and they made a great play on it and uh, were able to get a key but, turnover. Otherwise, we'd be looking at 60 right now. Well, and the thing is, neither one of our turnovers turned into points for, for the Yellow Jackets, and that's also important because, you know, a, a turnover doesn't really hurt you necessarily if you can stop the other team and they've been successful in doing that. Well, the Panthers making it back onto the field, starting their warm-up drills. The Yellow Jackets still, we're, we're 30 seconds left at halftime, and the Yellow Jackets are still in the locker room. I don't think Coach Kelly is happy about that first half. Individual numbers for the Panthers. Luther Tucker, eight carries, 109 yards in the first half. Drew Davis, two carries, 76 yards. As Brad Harris makes his way over to Rob Pepper. Coach Harris, really good in all phases of the game. A very opportunistic defense. Yeah. Offense is doing their thing. Just your thoughts on the first half. Well, I think we've dominated the game defensively except for two plays is what I think. Uh, we had, a, had kind of a letdown mentally, lost our eyes on two plays. The long touchdown run, I blitzed us out of that. That's on me right there. We were man coverage, didn't have a hangover guy. So uh, the guys just did a bad situation there. But the pass play, we just lost our eyes for a count. Other than that, I'm really, really pleased how we're playing defense. We've got two touchdowns, all right. Uh, got us in field goal range right there, special team scoring a little bit. We got to convert offensively. We're missing some open receivers, and we've had two opportunities in the red zone down here offensively. I mean, it could easily be 70 right now, you know. So, uh, you know, uh, we're not done yet. We're gonna go get after it this half and let's see what we can do. We wanna, our, our focus was at halftime is we wanna finish and dominate this thing and let them know that we're good. Uh, there's been a little bit of that chatter, okay? So, uh, <laughs> Coach, anyway, we've, so we've talked go about it. Them, good okay? luck to you. Yeah, when you come out and say Rogers is the best team we'll play all year, it uh, adds a little extra juice to the remaining teams on your schedule. Yeah. Well, that, that was our question to Braylon at halftime was, uh, does that chatter really matter? And, it absolutely uh, does. And he said it absolutely did. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> so it's funny at halftime, I, I, I walked over, had to go visit my grandson who lives here, uh, lives in Sheridan. He had a had a Sheridan Yellow Jacket football sweatshirt on. And so we're, we're already a house divided. But as I was talking to him, <clears throat> uh, I saw Grant Cole, who's one of Benton's uh, fine mailmen now and has been for years and years, but he was, he and I were co-captains of the Sheridan Yellow Jackets together. Now he lives in Benton as well. So uh, we got to have a little reunion down there on the track and he was like, man, things have changed. And I was like, well, not so much on the scoreboard from back when we played. <laughs> we, we were 0 and 20 my sophomore and junior year here. So, uh, not, not great football memories uh, in Sheridan's past. Mandy and I, uh, my wife, the Sheridan alum, had lunch today at Pasta Jays. And I uh, want to remind you, uh, Pasta Jays, for your event catering, they uh, do private events on Sundays at the restaurants. Kids eat 50% off dine in on Wednesday and Saturday. Pasta Jays is located at 1314 Green Street behind Sonic and Office Depot. Their phone number is 501-315-6800. Great pasta at Pasta Jays. It's good stuff. That lost pizza is good, too. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Chuck and the crew host uh, Panther Live every Tuesday night, and uh, it was lost pizza that fed the boys yesterday. Got a big mess of that for uh, the shutout last week. Yeah, you know, they fed me Tuesday night. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, you were there. I felt like I'd been part of the shutout. <laughs> <laughs> Lost Pizza's fun on Tuesday night, isn't it, Terry? It is, it is. Need to uh, come out and join us if you hadn't done that. Tuesdays at 6.30 is uh, Kyle Sanders making his way by the booth. Carter going to be starting at center tomorrow for the UAM Bow Weevils. Nice. And uh, they're at home against Southeast Oklahoma. 
Man, how great was it to have uh, Braylon Russell back home yeah. this open weekend and get to visit with him after such an incredible football game that he got to participate in and actually play a key role in. Extremely. A um, lot of fun. Yeah, and I tell you, Zach has really taken over the primary back at ASU. We need to check their bye week and uh, get Zach up here with us. So Sheridan going to kick off to open the second half. They have it teed up for a traditional kick. What in the world? They kicked it deep. Omarcus fields it at the 10. Omarcus to the near side. Omarcus up the side. Elias Payne with a pancake block. Omarcus with the cutback. Omarcus scores! Omarcus King, 90 yards on the kickoff return. And all three phases have now scored for the Panthers. It's 58-12. Wow. <laughs> oh, Marcus is holding that hammy, man. He, he ran all over this field. That was about a 127-yard touchdown. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know if that was Kevin Kelly's way of of, uh, of, of seeding uh, by not doing the onside kick, but guarantee they go right back to it because they have not practiced their kick coverage. <laughs> not at all. As uh, Garrett Honeycutt's leg just getting stronger tonight, he told me in pregame, he said, you remember the dent I put in the Jacksonville scoreboard last year? I'm going to try to hit the Sheridan scoreboard tonight. That's, a came pretty, up. that's pretty good ways back there. <laughs> oh. But it's, it's fun to hear the kicker talk about personal goals in pregame, 59 to 12. And uh, uh, Rob, all gas, no break, even on the kickoff return. Yeah, I mean, what more can you ask for? You don't have to put your offense even out there because we're going to score points with special teams. So that's uh, 21 points now from the defense and special teams combined. And, man, I'm telling you, on the sidelines, this the, the kids are loving this. Just oh. seeing all phases score. They're having just a blast. So 59 to 12. And uh, Garrett Honeycutt going to kick off and see if he can keep his touchback streak alive. Nope. Evans going to come up short, fielded at the 10 yard line by Parker Mullins. And that's how you cover a kick right there. It's down to make the tackle for the Panthers was Corey Anderson. I used to call in his name in special teams, but uh, Corey down there on the tackle. So. Clock should be running now, boys. Well, they didn't get the memo. I would think Kevin Kelly would uh, call up there and say, hey, just keep that thing running. We don't want to stop it at all. Dax McMullen. The quarterback going to bring a man in motion, hand it off to Zay Stevens. Stevens breaks a tackle, and Omarcus, kickoff return. Man is going to upend him on the Sheridan sideline. Well, I will tell you this. That was a great run by Stevens, yeah. and, and once again, that quickness is so dangerous. But Jay Thomas Pepper took a, a line on his, on his run that was going to prevent a touchdown. Yeah. That was a really smart play. So first down and 10 jackets following the Zay Stevens rush. McMillan going to throw it up, and the receiver got behind Omarcus. It's incomplete, overthrown intended for Mangrum. Second and 10. Omarcus is a little upset. He bit on a move and then got behind the receiver. He's upset with himself on that coverage. Saxophones taking a break as the Sheridan band, Benton band, both uh, taking the third quarter off as Stevens going to run out of bounds. Looked like he was just shy of the 40. Falls here by number six. Oh, Marcus having a second half. Come out of that locker room inspired. I'm telling you. 
down and seven. Tell you, there's going to be a million options for Neo Home Loans MVPs tonight. Yes, there are. As McMillan throws, Weston Monson in coverage. Ball tipped at the line of scrimmage, so it'll be fourth down and seven. And if they punt it here, Terry, I, I think that's the white flag being raised. Yeah, I think you're right. Great job on the line of scrimmage. Somebody got their hand up. May have been Jay Alford. Candidate Tip. for MVP. Most definitely. So they're going for it. McMillan, just a statue that's going to be knocked off its uh, perch by Walter Hicks. That's Walter's second sack. The hitman gets his second sack of the night. And so the Panthers going to take over and uh, Speaking of over, overtime is going to be all about the Panthers. Loss of six, and Benton will have it first and 10 at the jacket 33. Let's see TJ Williams get in on the action here. Drew going to throw it out to TJ. That was good coverage. Getting out there to uh, break it up for Sheridan Jacob Pilkington. Yeah, Pilkington had that. He was all over that. Um, I think the ball hit him in the back of the head. Yeah, diagnosed it well. It's funny hearing names the, of kids that I played with, the same last name, so it makes me wonder if that's their kids or? Well, I'm assuming because of the uniqueness of the name, Garrett Pilkington and Sheridan's Jacob Pilkington have to be kin somehow. Well, and, and the guy, the, the, the Pilkington I played with was also Jacob Pilkington. So I'm, I'm thinking that may be Junior out there. Panthers picked up 11 yards of whistle. We're going to get a dead ball false start to back bitten up five yards. So the completion to uh, Elias picked up 11. Now Benton will have it first and 15 following the false start. And yeah, we'll see if there's any up downs. Hadn't seen that tonight. Strew looking, lobbing for a wide open Will Carter, oh, oh. who got turned around and couldn't hold on to it in the end zone. Well, oh, that, that's something you don't see very often. Well, he was expecting that ball to be thrown to his to his right shoulder, and it was thrown to his left, and he had to turn right back around to get it. And, you know, that split second, you just kind of lose it. It's tough to make that catch. Drew fires to Elias. Elias up the Sheridan sideline. He's going to have a first down inside the 10, down around the six-yard line. Gain of 21. First down and 10 Panthers at the six. Drew looking, Drew firing. Elias goes up, holds on, touchdown. What a catch. That's a, Drew just threw up a jump ball and Elias went up and got it. And the Panthers up 65 to 12 as Honeycutt on for the extra point. Carter holds, Honeycutt's extra point is blocked by Braxton Fox. I'm gonna give him the Sheridan player of the game. Uh, he, he certainly put out the effort tonight. Look at that catch by Elias. And getting the foot down. Mm. Just high pointing it. Right over the, I mean, the defender never even, never even turned around and looked and uh, the, Drew Davis to, to put it where he put it, right over the top of the defender's head was unreal. So the longest uh, touchdown drive of the night with a running clock, two minutes, 19 seconds. That's still quick. Five play, 33 yards. 
And the Panthers up 65-12. to 12. Now, guys, you remember last year at Jacksonville, we saw the Panthers put a 70 spot on the board. One away from eclipsing that, uh, one score away from eclipsing that tonight. And uh, Honeycutt back to his old routine, kicking it out of the back of the end zone. So Sheridan will have it first down and 10 at their own 20. I think that last one that didn't quite make the end zone hurt his feelings. <laughs> I think yeah. you're right. Yeah, he put a little extra juice on that one. That one went five yards deep. The uh, hometown scorekeeper is uh, not a quick trigger on this. That clock sat at 6.05 forever. It's Laster in there at Nose Man. Hand off to Stevens coming near side. Nick Ride had the edge sealed. Uh -oh. Stevens cuts it back, and there goes Zay. He's going to have another long touchdown run. That one's going to go for 80 yards and a Sheridan score. Got to wrap him up. You know, uh, prior to this game, someone said that he might be the best running back we see all year. And I got to tell you, yeah, he's making a case for it. Well, and that's saying something considering we play against Bryant. And, and they've got a stable of good running backs. But that, uh, that young man's only a sophomore. And uh, you can see the speed he's got. <laughs> When he broke free, you knew nobody was catching him. So they go for the extra point. That's something you're not used to seeing out of uh, Kevin Kelly coach team. And Preston Hurd's extra point is good at 65 to 19. We're going to uh, we're going to take a 30 second break and come back. Hi, I'm Susie Everett, inviting you to come see us at Everett Buick GMC and discover the Everett difference. But what is that difference? It's outstanding customer service, the largest Buick GMC inventory in Arkansas, a state-of-the-art facility, and an outstanding team of professionals who put your needs first. From sales to service to financing, the difference shows in everything we do, every day. Come see us at Everett Buick GMC, I-30 at the Alcoa exit. So Zay Stevens scores on an 80-yard run with 5.32 to go. Now the clock's running, so. They finally got the memo. <laughs> yeah. 65 to 19. Panthers in front and expecting an onside kick, and I would too. I wouldn't kick it to old Marcus for nothing in the world if I were them. Yeah, oh, my word, they're going to kick it. Just kick it out of bounds. <laughs> Not a bad plan. I would suggest that it was a really good plan. <laughs> Panthers just going to take the football at the 35. And uh, get to see Quentin Godley in this series. Quentin so doing gets a good a job. Well, Coming right back out. <laughs> yeah. So TJ Williams going to go to running back. I like it. Got Poot and Will Carter, Coolis and Payne at running back. TJ going to motion out of the backfield. Drew looking. Drew going to be sacked. Thank you. He thought about it. He thought about it. <laughs> Jonathan DeLeon on the uh, sack for Sheridan back at the 26-yard line, loss of nine. It'll be second, 19. He thought about trying to get himself out of that and then talked himself out of it. I'm really glad he did. Good move just to tuck that and take the sack. Drew going to keep. Ooh. Well, and you can tell Sheridan uh, to defend against that is holding that linebacker, uh, that outside backer in, you know, don't crash down, you've got the quarterback. And he did his job. He forced Drew into, you know, into the inside where the defenders were. 11-yard game for Drew. It's third down and eight, two minutes to go in the third quarter. This Panthers going to swing it out to Elias. Elias trying to get the edge, hops a 
Sheridan tackler and is finally going to be dropped to the turf. Jackson uh, Delk makes the tackle at the 38 yard line. So Benton will punt it away on fourth down. You know, Drew Davis rushed the ball for over 200 yards last year. Uh, and, and this year, coming into this game, he had 164 yards. He may be getting close to 100 now. Well, he was at 76 at halftime. Suffered a nine-yard loss on the sack, so got him at 67. His punt's going to be downed at the 30-yard line. A punt of 32 yards for Dawson Daves, and Sheridan will have it right there. Want to start. Stay with us at the uh, quarter break. Got a little something special for you. And oh, yeah, you want to stick around for this. Rob, you might want to put your uh, earbuds in uh, Coach Nethery's ears for uh, for the quarter change here. Anything you want to weigh in before the uh, grand unveiling of this special video? It was well planned and well executed by <laughs> Dio. It, it was. I had some help, though. It's Brady Dillon back in at quarterback. He lofts one out for Mullins. And Tyson Jordan did a great job, Terry, breaking on that one and uh, busting up the, the reception. Yeah, he, he did objective number one extremely well, which has knocked that ball down. Um, really like the way he broke on it. He's going to get one of those before the end of the he season. Is. Second down give to Zay Stevens, and that time Walter Hicks, or was that Jack? It was, it was Hicks. Hicks got a hold of him, wouldn't let go. That's the end of the quarter. This quarter's come to an end, and before the fourth quarter, Dio, why don't you walk us through this little special video from last Saturday? Well, we were, that's, that's our uh, athletic director who was about to tee off, and, and I had to distract him so that my partner there could place a special ball on the tee. And uh, Nethery just took it. He took it hook, line, and sinker. He really thought there was <laughs> something wrong with his driver. I said I fixed it, handed it back to him. And uh, I guess he couldn't tell because I, I thought the ball that, I play, that we had placed there did not look very real. But, you know, he wants to get over this water here. He's really, he's really intent on, on having a good drive. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Here's a replay again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Got the triple. Got the triple replay. Oh. Uh, Nethery, you are now world famous. <laughs> oh, he's got the earbuds in. And he, he doesn't have the mic, so he can't he can't respond. That's great, Rob. Way to keep the microphone. <laughs> hey Rob, can we get uh can we get Nethery's uh take on that uh, drive you're talking about the uh, the golf ball oh yeah golf ball oh yeah man I you know what but it didn't phase me one bit Dio it did it did not phase me at all I just said let's let's tee up the real ball <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not into those little childish games that Dio plays <laughs> it's all business on the golf course <laughs> Uh, Fun times in Pantherland. All business. I'm really thankful we got the, the triple replay on that. <laughs> Jonathan, awesome job. So the old exploding ball trick. Fourth down and 13 for the Yellow Jackets. Brady Dillon drops back. Owen Seals applying pressure. Dillon going to throw, and that ball incomplete as it bounded out of the hands of Wally to Priest, and the Panthers going to take over at the Yellow Jacket 27-yard line. It was really a heads-up play by their quarterback to scramble and keep his eyes downfield. I mean, receivers got to catch that. Can't blame the quarterback when he puts it right on your numbers. Now we're going to see some substitutions, a few kids. 
Bryant leading PA 28-22. That's a lot closer than I thought it'd be. Yeah, yeah absolutely is. So first down, give it off to TJ Williams and TJ running hard over the 25 down near the 23 yard line for a gain of four. And Duffy Maddox is calling for the Panthers to get to 72. I'm with you, Duff. Jake Cloud in at a receiver spot for the Panthers. Second down, fake to TJ, throw, catch is made. Was well, a good catch by Will Carter. Yeah, Will. Once, in, once again in traffic. <laughs> Looks like he's going to have enough for a first down. Yep, six yards needed, six yards gained. First and 10 Panthers at the 17. And Drew to the end zone, uh, Will, Will Carter. Carter. That's a touchdown. Touchdown, Will Carter with the diving catch of 17 yards. And there's your 70 spot, 71-19. I was about to say, Duffy ordered it up, and uh, Will Carter and Drew Davis delivered it. Big night by the Panther offense. Rodgers is the best team we'll face on here. <laughs> Here at Honeycutt, as Chris Ramsey said, the guy that's going to need the ice bath after this one's Honeycutt. I, I'm serious. He's going to need to stretch out, stre make sure he stretches good. He's, his leg is going to oh, be worn out. That was a heck of a catch by Will Carter and to drag both of his feet. He got the pro touchdown. He got both feet in. So 72 to 19 is... The stopping the clock between possessions now has, uh, has gone ended. by the wayside. Yeah. I think somebody gave that the the clock keeper a uh, the memo. Hey, let's just keep it going, buddy. So it's been all gas, no breaks, but uh, I imagine we're going to see uh, some bench emptying now. As the Panthers have M press tonight. As Garrett Honeycutt's kickoff is, man, five yards deep. I think I just heard Kevin Kelly ask, how many freaking times is this kid going to kick it in the end zone? I had 65 yards in the air. I mean, I, <laughs> that's a heck of a boot. Yeah, I got Avian Beard in there now at the defensive end spot. Grayson Ross gonna get some time at a corner. Jake Johnson, Connor Stevens, Antonio Shelton, Roy Adams who had a nice second half at Sylvan Hills last week is at a corner. Still got JTP and Isaac Hill and Landon Jackson in there. As I say, Stevens gonna get the carry. JTP's gonna make the tackle. Really impressed with Stevens. Absolutely. His quickness, his ability to really break away. I mean, that that breakaway speed that he has is really fun to watch. Which is makes it even more impressive that Jay Thomas just ran him down before he could get outside. Throw out on the edge to Mullins. He makes the catch. Tyson Jordan has uh, come up lane. No. I'm wondering if he's cramping or if he pulled or popped something. Man, it, I, I don't know, but we're not going to get any aid out there in any sort of hurry. <laughs> oh, man. It looked like uh, it looked immediately like a cramp to me. Yeah, that's kind of what it looked like to me. Yeah, it's a cramp. He was trying to run on it, and it was just buckling him over. So Tyson Jordan with that uh, cramp walk. <laughs> Unmistakable coming it, to the sideline. Oh, it locked up again on him. <laughs> got over here. 
there's, there's nothing worse than cramp you can't get rid of. And they hurt too. Hand it oh. off to Zay Stevens. Landon Jackson going to get another tackle as he rides him out of bounds at the 46 yard line. Gain of 11 and a first down. How many tackles you got Landon for? Seven at this point. Okay. Walter Hicks with eight, so they're both all over the field. We may have to get Coach Crump and Bobby to weigh in on the uh, MVP voting tonight. There's so many. I think you, you almost have to just say the defense. <laughs> just give it to all of them. Just the defense is the MVP. A little Statue of Liberty play to Jace Bradshaw. Isaac Hill. Yeah. That's his fifth tackle. Him and Pepper both have five. Had a good night. Looks like the Yellow Jackets trying to just bleed the clock down and get out of here tonight as say going to hand off big Dominic Roy swallows him up at midfield. Roy having a big night. That's the first time we've recorded, I think, I mean, that's one of the bigger nights for a defensive lineman for us. That's five tackles for Roy. Little man. He's also had a sack and a half. Mellon going to throw. Good leaping catch by Parker Mullins on the sideline. Oh, and, wow. Uh, Benton 42. Yeah, what a catch. Mm -hmm. Threw over the top of the – I mean, it's a good pass as well. Threw over the top of the defender. Yeah, Land and Landon Jackson was actually in a really good spot, but he elevated the ball right over the top of him. Receiver went up and got it. Kept his foot in bounds. Third down and one. Jackets at the Benton 42. McMullen motions out of the backfield. Direct snap to Stevens. He's got the first down and more as he skips down inside the 30, down 25. I think I'll mark it all the way down to the 22, so give him 20. And our MVP from last week, Cade Llewellyn, great guy to visit with on Tuesday. Going to get the tackle, first down Jackets. 3.52 to go in the ball game. Benton leading 72 to 19. Handed off to big Eli Turner and look, Cade Llewellyn in there again on the tackle. Yeah, gets, Kate, in, gets in two plays and he makes a tackle on both of them. Man. Well, and, and it's all attitude, man. Uh, I listened to that Panther live, and I loved his attitude. He's like, next man up, when I get in, I, I want to do it for my teammates. Yeah, yeah. If, if I get six snaps, then I want to play as hard as I can for six snaps. And uh, that's how you, you gotta just got to love that attitude. Yep. That's kind of that Tom Brady attitude. Uh, <laughs> what it – was that the <laughs> – The jet sweep pass. Hey, it's creative. I mean, he's pulling out all the stops now. Landon Jackson forced him out of bounds, so give Landon another yep. tackle. Clock at 245 and rolling. Sheridan third and seven at the bit 19. Quads to the short side of the field. As McMullen takes a snap. Going to throw underneath. The catch is made by Mangrum, and he's going to have the first down inside the five as Antonio Shelton and Isaac Hill combine on the tackle. Nice little crossing pattern. Hit him in stride. Well, that was a slow developing play because those the, the, the quad, the, the trips receivers of that quad package had to clear everybody out so he could come underneath. That's a tough play to defend if you're the cornerback covering him because you've you got all that traffic kind of blocking your path. Panthers stemming on defense. Snap back to McMillan. He's going to throw underneath, and the catch is made for a touchdown to Jace Bradshaw. Yeah, the defensive backfield uh, 
really didn't cover a whole lot that <laughs> that play. <laughs> he had about uh, four different options that were open and found one of them for a score. Now the officials stop the clock for the two-point try. Well, we are almost at 100 on the total. So if they get this two, we'll be at 99 points. Need one more score? Break 100. I don't – what was that final score of the Jacksonville game last 70 year? 70 to nothing. Okay. Mullen going to throw for Turner. Turner is pummeled at the end zone as he dropped the ball. And that leaves it at 72-25. So don't forget Old Fashioned Day tomorrow. Downtown Benton Crafts Vendors Funnel Cakes. And mullets and beards. Mullets and beards. And Dio uh, may just win that. I, I tell you, if you win the crown tomorrow on that uh, mullet contest. I'll, I'll wear that crown to our next broadcast, I guarantee it. I may wear it all week at work. I gotta go get I gotta go get the sides trimmed up though. It's not mullet enough. End of the third, Bryant 35, Pulaski Academy 29. What a wow. game. Great football game. Listen, all I want to know is, is Mickey Davis going to be there? Because he's got a little bit of a, uh, of a flow going. I, I need to make sure I'm not going to be competing against Mickey. Because he may know the judges. That, he knows everybody. That's the key. My, <laughs> Mayor Farmer, who's judging the, the mullet contest? If, if you're still with us, uh, text me. Because Dio wants to pay him off. It depends. If the prize is a funnel cake, then yes, I will bribe the judge. <laughs> As hers uh, kick takes a high hop, and Will Carter is going to take a knee at the 33-yard line. And Panthers can just kneel this one out. Looking at the out-of-town school board, Catholic leads Jonesboro 20-7, to so it looks like another tough Catholic defense. Yeah. Uh, quite frankly, Marion leads West Memphis 35-6. El Dorado leads Sylvan Hills 31-6. So El Dorado will come to town next Friday. I bet they don't bring that poster with them from 2014. No, and I tell you, every time I say El Dorado at the Palace, I think of Stone Paul. <laughs> Have to. Coach Stone Paul. Chase Cobb in at quarterback for the Panthers. He's going to hand it off to T.J. Williams. Look out. T.J. up the Sheridan sideline. Braxton Fox is the last chance to get him. T.J. raining down inside the 10-yard line. Stat padding for the Panthers as T.J. Williams bust free. Well, and Bobby McAllister over here seeing the face mask, but unfortunately he, he had outrun the ref so far that the ref couldn't see it. 27 seconds, Benton with it at the nine yard line. High snap gonna keep his Chase Cobb. He's gonna be down to the four yard line. And we'll, now we'll see if it's all gas or no break. As Panthers have it at the four yard line with 10 seconds and Brad Harris says, nope, that's enough boys. 72 to 25, the Benton Panthers take care of business on the road at Sheridan tonight. We're gonna step aside and when we come back, we'll have the Panther post game show. We'll give you the Neo Home Loans MVPs. We'll have a visit with Brad Harris on the CTS Panther post game show. Benton wins it tonight, 72-25. Hi, I'm Susie Everett, inviting you to come see us at Everett Buick GMC and discover the Everett difference. But what is that difference? It's outstanding customer service, the largest Buick GMC inventory in Arkansas, a state-of-the-art facility, and an outstanding team of professionals who put your needs first. From sales to service to financing, the difference shows in everything we do, every day. Come see us at Everett Buick GMC, I-30 at the Alcoa exit. Hi, I'm Susie Everett, inviting you to come see us at Everett Buick GMC and discover the Everett difference. But what is that difference? It's outstanding customer service, the largest Buick GMC inventory in Arkansas, 
a state-of-the-art facility, and an outstanding team of professionals who put your needs first. From sales to service to financing, the difference shows in everything we do, every day. Come see us at Everett Butte GMC, I-30 at the Alcoa exit. So as a kid growing up in Benton, I dreamed of being a football player for the Panthers. And once I got into high school, I got to live out that dream. And the support every Friday night from the community here in this place is really, really special. Now that I'm a mortgage lender, it is my turn to support you. If you are looking to buy a home or refinance a loan, come see us at Neo Home Loans in downtown Benton. Does your financial advisor take the time to really listen to you? When you work with Caitlin King, your Edward Jones financial advisor, she focuses on what's important to you. You'll work together to create a personalized financial strategy to help you reach your goals. And you can partner long term to help your strategy stay on track. Contact Caitlin today at 315-5488. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Is there anything more exciting on Friday nights than taking the field in front of your hometown fans? One of the most rewarding things about football is working with your team to move the ball across the goal line. My favorite part about football, though, is playing on a team. Uh, and when it comes to that, when it comes time to buy a refinance, you've got the team at Neo Home Loans to help you get across the goal line. Congo Fireplace and Patio has been Benton's go-to place for all your hearth needs since 1920. Stop by now and see over 20 live burning displays. With the South's largest collection of gas logs, gas inserts, and wood burning stoves, Congo has what you need to heat your home this winter. Get any accessory you need for your fireplace and stove in one place. Plus see the largest selection of pellet stoves. With over 90 years of combined sales and service, there's no other place to shop. Merchants and Farmers Bank is now open in the newly remodeled Cornerstone Downtown Building, formerly the Benton State Bank Building at 146 West South Street. Merchants and Farmers Bank is a community bank with local ownership and local decision making. Merchants and Farmers provides all the big bank products, but with a small bank friendliness. It's a banking experience you once enjoyed that is back in Benton at Merchants and Farmers Bank. Also conveniently located in Bryant at Highway 5 and Spring Hill Road. Stop by for a visit or give them a call at 501-443-6533. Jones Heating and Air, located at 520 Edison Avenue in Benton, specializes in residential, commercial, and new construction HVAC systems and offers 24-hour service. Jones is a proud supporter of Benton Panther Athletics, the Saline County Boys and Girls Club, and youth sports at Benton's Riverside Park. Find out more at jonesheatingandair.com or call 501-778-3324. Allied Glass is a full service glass shop located in historic downtown Benton. Allied Glass is a third generation business and family owned and operated since 1967. Mirrors, shower doors, commercial storefronts, auto glass repair and replacement, tabletops, screens, plexiglass, and much more. For all your glass needs, call Allied Glass at 501-778-6244, located at 115 East Severe in downtown Benton. Welcome back to Sheridan, where Benton has won it tonight, 72 to 25 over the Yellow Jackets. And uh, on an all gas, no breaks night, it's a happy Brad Harris down on the field with Rob Pepper. <laughs> What's not? <laughs> Coach, really emphatic road win. Yeah. Uh, just your thoughts on the game and the performance of the team. Man, really, really proud of the guys. I mean, we we challenged them this week. We didn't have a good week of practice at all this week. Tuesday was not real good. Uh, Wednesday was all right. We've had several guys out with injuries and things. And, you know, it's just rough when you get out of, of a routine of having got certain guys in certain positions. But, man, tonight they played really well. You know, uh, really proud of how we played defensively. Uh, six, he's special, man. He's a good player, and uh, you got to see that tonight. We missed two tackles on him, and he 
He probably, I don't know how many yards he had, but he busted two long ones on us. And then we, we lost our eyes on that first touchdown as coverage, and they got us over the top. But as, as an overall, they didn't hit us very many times over the top. And uh, I mean, you know, when, when, when Coach Kelly's calling and he's trying to take shots and throw the football around, I don't know how many plays we played defensively, but it seemed like about 100. Uh, we was out there a lot, uh, probably because we were scoring quite quite often off, and then we had a couple of defensive scores. But man, just extremely proud of these guys coming in here and, and winning big like they did. All three phases scored touchdowns tonight. That's yeah. got to make you feel good as a coach. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, we emphasize things like that. We had worked a hands team all all week, and uh, you know, I thought we did a good job with that. Uh, that's tough. They kick it a lot harder than what we practiced, and uh, the guys adjusted to it. But then we also worked on if they kicked it deep out of our hands situation for a Marcus to try to get the edge like that and everybody seal inside. And it, they did a phenomenal job of executing things that we covered just a couple of times, you know. And when you put the ball in a Marcus's hands on return, man, he's explosive, he's electric. And, uh, you know, he, he returned it and, and made them pay. So that was a big moment uh, coming out at halftime. You know, I mean, if we don't score right there, uh, they wanted to play the game the second half instead of having the clock run as much. So we opened it up a little bit right there with that touchdown. And then offensively scored a couple more. So, but real proud of the guys. We appreciate you, Coach. Right. Good win. Get them rested up. Appreciate you guys. All right. Go Panthers, baby. Sheridan did run 72 plays tonight to Benton's 42. So the Panthers were minus 30 in snaps. Well, we wow. scored a point for every play they ran. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> 42 snaps, 72 points. But uh, you did have 21 come from the defense and special teams. Yeah. Um, i tell you a number that stands out to me. Rob, you still on there? Or have you uh, cut off? I think Rob he's pulled, cut off. He's pulled okay. your plugs out. How about Sheridan 0 for 6 on fourth down? Yeah, that's yeah. huge. Huge uh, for the defense to step up like that. They were 0 and 4 after the first half. And then, you know, followed it up with two more in the second half. I mean, that that's lights out because that's where Kevin Kelly, you know, steals. He steals points by the onside kicks and stuff and couldn't do it tonight. So you play a disciplined team with that always go for it, never pun, always onside <laughs> kick. If you don't get a fourth down and you don't recover an onside kick, and you give a team a short field, you get 72 hung on you. Yeah. Well, Benton, Benton did everything right tonight. You know, I, I I think, you know, that it's proven that when you're playing against good teams, you can't run that style of, uh, uh, of a game plan. And uh, that's been proven at the college level. That's been proven at the high school level. But I think also what Sheridan found out about tonight was that Rodgers wasn't the best team that they played. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. Well, and Drew Harris, before the game, was talking, you know, about his time at, at Little Rock Christian and, you know, because they played Pulaski Academy. And what he was talking about was when Kelly was at Pulaski Academy, he had 100% complete buy-in from all the players and their parents. Everybody bought in to what he was doing. And I don't know if it was immediately or if it took some time, but when you come into a place like Sheridan, and, you know, you're faced with some of these situations. And, and at Blasky Academy, he had the athletes and the, and the buy-in. They didn't question going for it on fourth and, you know, fourth and ten on your own ten-yard line. Um, but I think, you know, it's tough for a team to adjust to this style of play, especially in year one. I mean, it's just yeah. – it's hard to be like, why are you going to – you know, why are you doing that? And you saw Kelly did some things that were not very Kevin Kelly-ish. I mean, they had – Three, what, three punts tonight or two? Two of the two quick kicks. Yeah. Um, it was at least two. It may have been three, but, I mean, he also kicked off. Yep. <laughs> which he doesn't do very often. And uh, and didn't go for two on every play. He went for one on uh, And kicked a field goal. That's yeah. right. Yeah, two punts, which yeah. uh, was more than their uh, season total through five games. There you go. So, uh, it, was a, it was a patented Brad Harris game, though. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, that was Brad Harris football at its finest. Absolutely. Tonight. So, uh, got the final stats, uh, Jonathan, if you'd punch those up. And uh, we'll let Terry and Dio break down what they see. Well, first of all, 15 carries for 50, 254 yards rushing. And, you know, uh, as we talked about Stevens, man, what a special talent he is. Uh, 204 yards, and I don't know what his 
carries were, but well, it, I, he's got to have 180 least, of it. Yeah, at least 160. I was thinking, if not, if not more. How about 15 carries, 214? Wow, 214 yards rushing. So the sacks. And oh, the, the sacks. Yeah, that's right. Back. That's right. Yep. What an amazing night for him, and uh, and then you know total offense 453 yards, and and that's four 453 yards on a short field. Yeah, I mean, the, the Panthers only had maybe two, two maybe three drives where they started you know, were, on, on were their side on the their field. side yeah. of the field. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, I, I agree that 42 42 plays, and they they kept it up in the second half. Uh, when we came out of halftime. They were averaging over 10 yards uh, a play. They kept that throughout the game. I mean, almost 11 yards per play. Pretty impressive. I want you to think back. At one point, this uh, game was 14 to 12. Yeah. <laughs> one point. Panthers went on a 45-0 run to get it to 59-12 before Sheridan scored again. Yep. So, uh, wow. Wow. Um, MVPs? Yeah, it's uh, – man, there's about a million options uh, for this one. And, man, it's hard – this is truly a game where it's hard to single out individuals because the entire team played so well tonight. Just – Well, it, and that's why, like, on the offense, um, you know, we – the ball gets spread around. So many receivers – make big plays and, and have good nights. Drew Davis, you know, obviously another another good night. Didn't have huge yards, but that's because – Well, but, he, offensive... but he, had, he had huge yards, you know, on the ground. He had he, 78 he yards on the ground. He, he did. He made up. So, you add that to his total. So, he's at, you know, 260 or 270, which is which is a little bit more normal for his, his passing yardage total. But how about the offensive line? Because they not only only allowed one sack – at the very end of the game when it didn't matter. But 15 carries for 254 yards, you can't do that without your offensive line making, you know, making some big holes. I mean, we saw several uh, nine-yard, you know, nine-yard, nine-yard, nine-yard carries, like over and over and over again. And then a couple that, you know, Luther broke for a little bit longer distance. But that – that we talked about it in the break. Offensive line is, you know – you, you got to represent them. Anytime you're rushing for over 250 yards, your offensive line has had a star-studded night. Yeah. And, and so we're going to go MVPs, the, the entire offensive line, but we're going to have Kendrick Jackson represent them. Uh, senior has, you know, we don't call offensive linemen names enough. We, we name them when they're, when they're out there, but, you know, Kendrick Jackson's just a – Or Jackson Kendrick. Thank you. Yeah. I always do that. I want to say that because I, I, I knew a guy named Kendrick Jackson. <laughs> so, anyway, but, yeah, Jackson Kendricks. On offense with the uh, offensive line all being honored on uh, Tuesday at Panther Live. Now on the defensive side where the uh, stat sheet tonight, D.O., littered with sacks and interceptions and pass breakups and, I mean, uh, <laughs> Walter Hicks had eight tackles, two sacks, a fumble caused, and a fumble returned for a touchdown. Big night for him. Uh, Alfred had, you know, one tackle, the fumble recovery, and the and the return for the touchdown. Uh, Landon Jackson, eight tackles, two pass break, two big pass breakups. One one of those would have definitely gone for a touchdown had he not, and an interception. Uh, you know, and then you got Isaac Hill, six tackles. Roy, five tackles. Pepper, five tackles. Uh, it, Omarcus had two interceptions. Just a big, big night statistically for that defense. But Landon Jackson was the name that we consistently called out. He was all over the field. Even when, it, it, you know, the ball was overthrown, he was there uh, and trying to make a play on it. Almost got, uh, almost got a second interception. He did have an interception, so that would be my pick. Landon Jackson, Terry, any uh, rebuttal? Hey, there's no rebuttal because it was really important that the Panthers start off really hot and really aggressive it, on the defensive side of the ball, and they had to shut it down. And the guy that stood out at the first of the game that came out of the gate, I mean, with absolute aggression, 
was Landon Jackson. Mm. He played a great football game, got an interception, should have had two. Um, I just – he would be my pick. There's a lot of guys that could be my pick, including the two defenders that scored touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, but but Landon gave that fir- that burst of energy to start the game that I think fed the rest of that defense. And the task uh, now is going to be, how do you tell a guy like O'Marcus he didn't get MVP? He had two interceptions and ran a kickoff back 90 yards for a touchdown. I mean, Absolutely. You know, so many stars tonight for the Panthers. Um so, uh, I got a feeling we're going to uh, laud a lot of guys, even if they're not interviewed on Tuesday at Lost Pizza. I agree. Yeah, well, we have to. Because yeah. the, the they deserve it. They deserve it, absolutely. Yeah. That defense played lights out tonight. Yeah, it was clean. It was crisp. It was uh, a three-phase whipping. Who we got next week? El Dorado? El Dorado okay. comes to the palace. That's going to be fun. Yeah. We don't have to drive to El Dorado. That's the fun part. <laughs> yeah, and Minuteman is now forever closed in El Dorado, I... which takes away a lot of the lure of going there. I saw that. Why go there? Yeah. So, they'll come here. Fantastic. Posters in hand. <laughs> yes. I think they learned that lesson. Yeah, they're not bringing posters. Uh, and uh, something tells me exploding golf ball A.D. Nether, he might not let them put them up ever again. So, hey, final word, Terry. As you uh, take a swig of Coke yeah. Zero, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. You caught me, caught me just at the right time, man. I, I'm I'm really proud of the team. They came out and uh, played very uh, aggressive and very um, fast. And uh, it, we we did have some miscues. We saw possibly the best running back that we're going to play against this year. Um, and so it was just a great outing by the Panthers, great individual efforts by a lot of players, great team win. Theo? I mean, team win is a, is a great way to put it. Like you said, we scored in all three phases of the game. I mean, that's that. this is the kind of football game that you want to play. You're in, you're in great form midseason to be playing like this. Uh, this is exactly where Coach Harris wants these Panthers. So, uh, El Dorado next week at home at the Palace. Benton wins it tonight emphatically 72-25 over Sheridan. Come join us Tuesday night at 6.30 at Lost Pizza for Panther Live. Uh, We'll visit with Brad Harris. He'll recap tonight's big win and preview next Friday's matchup with the Wildcats. Uh, We'll also visit with our Neo Home Loans uh, MVPs tonight, Jackson Kendricks representing the entire offensive line and Landon Jackson for the PDC. And we'll also round up a couple of seniors to put in the spotlight. Next Friday, the Panthers are back at home after back-to-back weeks on the road as the El Dorado Wildcats come to town. Kickoff at the Palace will be at 7 o'clock. If you can't make it, we'll have the broadcast for you beginning with the Everett Buick GMC Panther pregame show at 6.30 want to give a big shout out to our engineer and producer, Matt Johnson, who not only uh, labored with us through some uh, technical difficulties tonight, he also fed us some awesome barbecue from Wright's Ranch House. So uh, thank you for that, Matt. To Jonathan Webb and Aaron Garrett, who uh, pulled overtime directing and running audio and troubleshooting um, some of our uh, streaming issues tonight. Thank you to them. And for Chase Bowden and Evan Garrett on cameras. A big thank you to the Benton administration, to Athletic Director Scott Nethery, to Sheridan Athletic Director Rick Treadway, and to Sheridan's play-by-play broadcaster Mason Fisher for their help this week. For Terry Benham, Henry Hicks, Rob Pepper, and Dio Venucci, I'm Jim Gardner. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for Benton Fighting Panther Football. And don't ever forget, folks, It's always a great day to be a Benton Panther. And especially today as Benton wins at 72-25 over Sheridan. Until we greet you next week back home in the friendly confines of the palace, good night, God bless, and go Benton.